Welcome to Fullerton College Football on Sportsnet USA.net. Hi, I'm Mark Pavlovich, along with Corey Nalen. We are the voices of Fullerton College Football, and it's week two as the Hornets come away with a 77 to 28 championship. As we take a break here, Corey, quickly for the national anthem here on Sportsnet USA.net. So we get ready for another exciting football game here on SportsNetUSA.net. Last week, Fullerton ends up beating Santa Ana 77 to 28. Corey, it really was the quarterback work. Jordan Hoy goes away. I don't know. We got two quarterbacks that can do it for the Hornets this year. Yeah, I think those two quarterbacks, Ladarius Skelton and Kane Wilson, have the opportunity to be just as prolific as Jordan Hoy was last year. 77 points. That's the positive for last week. The negative, well, that 28 points they given up to Santa Ana. That defense was not up to par. The front four was okay. The back seven needs help. Well, let's get ready to see what happens as Cerritos is going to start this game on offense. Back deep is going to be Hall. Standing next to him. Is Roderick Ashford Jr. Cerritos loses a tough game against LA Valley last week as they end up losing because of turnovers in the game. That's what the outcome of the game was. So we'll see if they can clean their game up just a little more in this game. Looks like it's going to go to Roderick Ashford Jr. in the end zone, about by two yards. Up the 10. Jukes right there. Gets away from one. Corey can't really get out of any tackle. It's going to be down at the 13-yard line. And he's brought down by the starting linebacker, Cole McCarty, on the stop. And that brings Fullerton's defense up. And we'll set that defensive line up and the offensive line for the Falcons in just a moment. So we'll see who comes out of quarterback. Heard there might be a quarterback change. First Cerritos in this game out wide to left is going to be. So a new at quarterback is going to be Quentin Davis at quarterback. And Stacy Chukwamizzi. So Chukwamizzi out wide to the left. Going to run it right up the middle and the defense swarms and Corey, this is a defense that Brian Crooks said the defensive line has been outstanding in this game so far when you look at it and Roderick Ashford was lucky to even just end up with the loss that he had on that of seven on the play. It's gonna bring up a second down and 17. They're gonna mark it right at the seven yard line. And that was Oscar Bergueno on the stop, joined by Montre Bond who had a monster game last week, Jamichael Moore on the interior and Joey Noble. Back to quarterback is Davis. Took Wisby out wide to the right. Davis looks over in this direction. He's going to make it right there. It's a gain of about six or seven on the play at the sideline, but it's going to bring up a big third down for Cerritos College. And that rest of that defensive front, unit four, Fullerton, is going to be at the linebackers, Roy Otto, Cole McCarty, and Caleb Johnson. Otto, middle linebacker, 5-1, Johnson, 3-2, near side McCarty. So third down. Quizby comes out 
wide to the left. Out wide to the right is going to be Justin Garrett. That quarterback shotgun formation is Davis. Davis goes back. Has the middle of the field wide open. Throws it to the outside. Incomplete pass. Trying to complete that to Garrett. Who's out of Gar High School. So the defense pass for the Hornets comes up big. And now the man that Corey says is going to break the return record this year. At least that's what you keep saying. Justin Mannyweather is out there on the field. Kickoff return record is three by one individual. And that is two individuals to hold that record. Keon Lee and Marnez Ogletree. Manny Weather just at the 45. Here comes the pressure up the middle. High spiral, not true G. Manny Weather signals for a fair catch across midfield at the 47. So it'll be first down and 10 for your Hornets who came off a big 77 to 28 victory last week here on Sportsnet USA. Dot net. Want to remember, Miller Toyota of Anaheim makes all these games possible here on SportsnetUSA.net. And the day wouldn't start right without a few zombie donuts thrown in at the side. Kane Wilson, who had a very good game, comes back out at quarterback. Devin Fleming goes out wide left. Wilson, at quarterback, looks over, hands it off, taking around the corner. It's going to be Joshua Jeffrey. Joshua Jeffrey has the ball, pop three. Turnover taken there, and Corey Cerritos just says to Jeffrey, I wanted that loaf of bread much more than you because I got 12 kids at home and I got to feed them. Yeah, P.J. Naafua gets the fumble recovery, and we didn't see who knocked it out, but a big turnover for Cerritos, and that's the way you want to start out this ball game when you're the team that's not favored to win. You got the ball, that second replay, or excuse me, that second Second out opportunity on offense is ready to go. So they quickly come back out. Davis brings them back out quickly at court. Quinton Davis. Josh Rosen replacement at St. John Bosco when he was there. Goes back, has time to throw, gets hit. And Jamichael Moore is in there first. Second is Montre Bonner, so that's half sacks for both. So Jamichael gets his first sack of the season as they just blew through the offensive line of the Falcons. That offensive line, Chris Fa'amu, Fia Afamata, Asher Clayson, Clayson, excuse me, Adam Torville, and David Zavala of the front five for the Falcons. Chuck Wisme out wide left. In the slot next to him is going to be Justin Garrett. They come up, throws over here, a quick little slant to the outside. That's going to be a completed pass. So they get a little pass of that sack back. Five, Brings up a third down. And that's secondary for the Hornets. Near side, Davion Bullock Number is going to be David matched up against Chukwamezi on that near side. So it's going to be a good matchup. And also on the far side, cornerback is David Richardson. The safeties will be Cameron Powell and Kari Henley. Garrett out. Wide to the right, Chukwu Mizzi out wide to the left. Gutierrez in the slot, Davis goes back, looks. Doesn't have time, and Corey once again, the defensive line is just overwhelming the offensive line of Cerritos. And that's Jamichael Moore, Jamichael two, tackles Moore last, two tackles last week, two sacks today. So Jamichael Moore having a good start to the 2017 season. Fourth and 20, ball on the 50 yard. So Justin Mannyweather gets an opportunity again. Humberto Avila is the punter for Cerritos. Mannyweather back there. High floater. Mannyweather signals for a fair catch. Takes it right at the 20 yard line. So at 11 51. Here in the first quarter, nobody's gotten on the board Number yet. One, and if Justin it's a battle Manny of Weather. turnovers, well, Cerritos is Fair one up catch. over Fullerton. First down and 10. Ball. That was a 32-yard kick, no return. So Fullerton's second chance has an opportunity after that fumble by Jeffrey. And there's a flag on the play. We'll see what the flag is. And we'll set up that defense for Cerritos in just a moment as we didn't have time that last possession. And don't forget... And that was a sideline warning against Cerritos. Mark, don't forget, 
You can Sideline tweet us warning. at Sportsnet USA. At Sportsnet USA Net. Go ahead and uh, hit us up on Facebook as well. Find my name, Corey Nalen, and we'll get that response to you. And we already have a couple listeners from Arizona listening to us right now. Dale, how you doing? Hoping that shoulder is rehabbing well. We'll see you guys in December, maybe January. Well, and we want to put a shout out to Coach Campbell's family. His dad's a little under the weather, but we hear he's feeling better. So a big victory today would make him feel better. Going to hand it right off the center. Cut at the corner. Gets a block on the outside. Turns the corner. And that's Hewlett. Or no, is that? That is Hewlett in the game. So Hewlett comes up really big with his first carry of the game. So we watch Hewlett right there, Corey, going off of right tackle for a big game. Go back, lick and throw it over the flat. Does right that, turn the corner. Got to make the tackle there at the 30, the 50. Cutting, looking for an opening. And so far, this is the one thing that impresses me is the wide receivers making blocks for their brother receivers after a catch. So they're going to keep things moving here. That's a big game by Robert Downs. You see him make the turn on the out. And broken tackle, Josh Caldwell, you got to wipe up. And there's a flag on the play, false start, illegal procedure. That'll give us time to set up that defense for the Falcons. Up front, P.J. Na'afahu, M.J. Togafahu, Jordan Thomas, and Derek Thomas, the front four. The back seven will be Tashawn Barnaby, Bryn Fire Smith, as well as Isaiah Walton, Stanley Norman, Latrell Stearns, Josh Caldwell, who missed the tackle on Robert Burns, Sean Swain, and Devin Burrell. Those 11 and 12 guys will be out there constantly for the Falcons. Hawk and Grossman out wide left. Manny Weather in the slot on the right-hand side. Wilson, pump fake, throws it over. Gets exactly that. Going to turn the corner, trying to get out of bounds. Does, gets knocked out of bounds on a nice little catch to Robert Downs on the play. We get a flag at the end of the play. And what is, and what it's going to be, it's going to be offsides with the first flag at the line of scrimmage and late hit out of bounds. Again, Robert Downs does another good job of spinning out of the tackle and picking up that yards after the catch. You see the offsides on the far side on a blitz from the outside backer. Here's Downs with a nice fake. That in and out little cha-cha step picks up that positive yardage. And if you watch a replay, Justin Mannyweather gets away with a hole offensively to fend off the defensive back. That flag not seen. And, and I see that personal foul on that replay that we watched. Who did they call it on? I didn't hear who they called it on. If it's on number 11, I'm not sure you can call that on Derek Thomas because Robert Downs was still running. He couldn't quite see him step out of bounds, so he might as well be safe and push him out one more time. So they trade out receivers. Wilson out wide to left. Tight end comes in now. Kane Wilson, the quarterback, steps up to the line of scrimmage. Two wide receivers. Hawk out wide to left. Wilson out wide to the right. First down and 10. Right at the 20 for the Hornets. They're knocking on the door early in this game. We get a flinch on the right hand side and Corey you see that more than often that that receiver when he gets set leans forward for the false start it's going to move it back five yards it's going to bring up a first down and 15. Wilson looks over the sidelines stays with the same setup Cerritos creeps up just a little Wilson looks over tries to watch the corners to see if they're going to creep Goes with a long count on this. Goes back, runs it up to Jeffrey. Jeffrey goes off left tackle, gain of two on the play. Gain of five on the play. Jeffrey, they quickly come back to the line of scrimmage. Same offensive set for the Hornets. Wilson looks things over. Jeffrey, the deep setback. They go one direction, they go the other direction, off right tackle with Jeffrey. This time, a gain of seven on the play. And the older Coach Campbell would like that. He was a prolific running back during his time. And so now they're using Joshua Jeffrey and Gerald Hewlett running the ball behind the big offensive line, and they're picking up that positive yardage. 
center for the Hornets, Rashad Harris. He's out of Daytona Beach. Right guard will be Delton Crandall. Left guard is James Stanton. Robert Johnson out wide to the right. They hand it up to Hewlett. Stutter steps in the middle. He should have enough for a first down. And excuse me, Delton Crandall is the right guard. James Stanton, the left guard. Left tackle will be Eric Pulliam. And the right tackle, Muhammad Jefferson. So Johnson out wide to the right. Hewlett in the slot on the left-hand side. Kane Wilson takes it himself, gets over, and is going to get it down all the way to the three-yard line. Conversations between an offensive coordinator and the officials. Gary Campbell was like talking, say, hey, they were 12 men on the field. They couldn't get off. We thought we snapped it in time. They said, that's okay. You picked up positive yardage. So Robert Downs now comes back into the game. So Downs will be wide to the right. Abdul Haq will be wide to the left with Grossman in the slot on the left-hand side. Wilson now starts Hewlett in motion from right to left. Wilson goes back, throws it over there, taken by Robert Johnson. Robert Johnson gets short of the goal line. Nice catch, nice tackle out there by Isaiah Walton. And we have a timeout on the field. Officials timeout is a guy with the helmet runs off and when your helmet comes off, you gotta go out. That's Titus Tauta. And you know what, Mark? One of our listeners just uh, tweeted, they like the uniforms out there for Fullerton. You know, I'm not the only one who likes the gray. There you go. Well, if you're colorblind, it's a good uniform to look at. Still want the gray on gray, but the gray jersey, that's nice. 849, still no score here in the first quarter at Chappelle Stadium. Wilson looks over. I formation for the Hornets. They look over the sideline. Wilson rolls out, there's nobody there. He's gonna take it down himself and go in for an easy little touchdown on the play. And Noah Hoffman, the tight end, is the one that seals the block in the end zone for Wilson to get in. Yeah, great design bootleg. He gave him two options. You can take the run with the block by Hoffman or you can pass to the receiver running alone in the end zone. He takes a safe route and gets his first rushing touchdown of the game. Old man Kane gets there and scores. I, I, re I really like Kane Wilson of Darius Skelton. I think this combo is going to be great all season. Well, we'll see as it continues with 8.44 to go. Hornets try to get the seventh point out of the board, and they do. So with 8.44 to go here in the first quarter, it's Fullerton 7, Cerritos 0. You're watching Fullerton College Football on Sportsnet, USA.net, in conjunction with Fullerton College TV. Corey Neal and myself, Ryan's down on the field with Richie. And I tell you what, Corey, interesting thing you brought up about that double-headed quarterback. You and I were talking about it last night at the high school game about which quarterback was better. And you just sort of looked at me and said, well, Wilson throws better. I sort of thought Skelton was the more prolific passer. But you like Kane Wilson as a, as a quarterback. Yeah, as a thrower, as a rifle guy, as your quarterback, uh, just, you know, throwing the ball down the field, Kane Wilson. Ladarius Skelton can be that prolific he gives you that dynamic, more elusiveness out of the backfield at the quarterback position. Don't, don't get me wrong. He can throw it. Um, but both of them can move. That's why it's such a great combination because both can throw, both can move. How do you stop them? Well, I know one thing. Coach Campbell just said that touchdown there was for his father. That means his dad's getting better. He'll be out of practice one of these days soon. We hope you're feeling good. Can't wait to see you out here at a Hornet home game. Going to go down to Ryan after after the kickoff. We'll head down to Ryan, see what he's got down on the field. Hope to hear from Ryan and Richie a lot today. Hall and Ashford back deep. Ashford's going to creep underneath it right at the 10. Ashford at the 10. Looks for an opening. He's at the 20. Tries to cut back and runs right into two cars going the wrong direction. And the lead car on that for the Hornets was Jay Brown out of Corona, Roosevelt High School. Ryan, Ryan, what you got? So right now we're down here on the field with Richie Malgoza. Coach Gary Campbell told his offense, just shrug it off. That opening play fumble, just shrug it off. They have to be able to recoup themselves and go back onto the field more confident. And Coach Griffin telling his players one more time, they're the best, team, they're the best offense in America, so play like it. Back up to you guys in the booth. Davis back there. Now Quentin Brown in it running back for Cerritos in the backfield. Davis looks things over. Hands it off to Brown. Brown comes on a sweep. Tries to get the big guys out in front of him. And, Corey, they undercut the big offensive lineman 
to get them for next to nothing. We've got a scrum going on down in the field and they finally get things to go on down there. So, gain of one on the play, just across the 30 yard line for Cerritos, the Cerritos Falcons. Davis, six foot two, 220 pound freshman. Vincent Brown, the running back, 5'11 out of Artesia. Deep set back, tight end on this side. Davis looks at it, fakes it to Brown, rolls out, gets a quick little release on that left side by Cortez. Cortez turns, goes down the field, easy first down, fake to Brown, then roll out against the pressure and to flip it for a first down for Cerritos. And the scenario is you saw how aggressive Fullerton was on that first couple series, getting in the backfield two sacks that time. They negated the aggressiveness. Watch them negate their aggressiveness out of a little wide receiver slip, not quite a screen, but it's just a slip out to pick up that. Maybe they're going to slow up the Hornet D. Yeah, you know, and they call on that play, they call Kevin Venturis. They call him a tight end. He does look more like a wide receiver for that just not a tight end that's usually six foot four and bigger. We get a flag on it, personal foul. It's getting a little chippy down there already. Well, he is six six. Yeah, but he doesn't look like he's got the bulkiness. Maybe he does. 220. Okay, so him and I are about the same size. Garrett goes out wide to the right. Quentin Davis at quarterback. Brown still in the backfield. Comes back over this direction. Nice little pitch taken over there. And that's Gasser. And Jacob Gasser has been a bright spot for the Cerritos football team at wide receiver. So Gasser moves the chains on that. So you're watching Davis starting to feel comfortable. And Corey, if they get the time as you watch it there, Gasser gets it. You like what he does. He goes straight up field with the football. Yeah, and that's a mix-up on the secondary. Watch Fullerton on that right side. We'll see if they come. New defensive end Kevin Robertson out of Blair High School in Maryland. Let's see if they work that right side. Gasser out wide to the right. Davis looks over. Brown in the backfield with him. Once again, fakes it to Brown. Takes it down himself. And defense stays at home to really shorten that run attempt. Yeah, Bergrano forces him out. And Jalen Betts makes the stop. Here's her coming on the right side. Bergwino forces them out of the pocket, rolls out, and there's Betts in on the stop. So out wide to the right. It's going to be Tanner Gill, an ex Hornet in the game right now. Run it off, right off the middle, off tackle. There, could it get taken down? And Brown's got that speed straight up the middle, that north and south run. And it actually is. This field is north and south. So he was running for Newport Beach and almost got there on that carry. Yeah, Brown just exploded right up the middle. And Fullerton's defense, again, they're a little bit, I don't know, apprehensive on this drive. They're not hitting the holes hard. And the linebackers, we saw them last week. They're a little bit shy, if you will out there and they're gonna not you know they got to get out of that side and it's quick garrett goes out wide to the right ashford comes out here on the left hand side brown in the still on the backfield with davis shotgun formation and we get time out on the field so with 5 40 to go here in the first quarter well the hornets are on top first but right now the falcons are knocking on the door it's fullerton seven cerrito zero you're watching fullerton college football on Sportsnet, USA.net, in conjunction with Fullerton College TV. Don't forget, hey, if you were driving over here today, if you were cruising around, having a good old time, well, no better way to cruise than in a new Toyota from Miller Toyota of Anaheim. And, of course, if I was going to stop and buy myself a new Toyota and I'm going to make myself real happy, well, I'd have done like the TV crew did. I'd have those three dozen zombie donuts in the front seat of the car with me, and I'd be feeling like I could break every traffic law on the street. All I'd have to do is wave a donut, and I'd be doing fine. So we'd be doing really well if you're driving that new Toyota from Miller Toyota of Anaheim with those three dozen zombie donuts in the car with you. And here it comes. 
that Falcon offense that looks like they're driving that Toyota from Miller Toyota of Anaheim. Quentin Davis brings them out. Brown still in the backfield. Out wide to the right is going to be Garrett. Davis looking for something. Had Garrett all by himself. Goes for the corner of the end zone and just overshoots his big tight end, Ventura Cortez. And you know, Mark, you mentioned those donuts. You got a crew coming out from Michigan later on in the season. They're expecting donuts. Well, we'll just make sure they get some when they come out here. Oh, you love those zombie donuts. Corey, once again, and we'll talk about it after these series of downs with Cerritos about what the defense has been doing. Garrett out wide to the right. Gasser in the slot on the right-hand side. Stevenson and Brown in the backfield. Davis keeps it himself. Davis stays on his feet, struggles. Are they going to count him in? He's going to be down at the goal line. And they're just running the playbook out of Fullerton. You know, that read option play is Davis is. Well, watch, watch the replay here. You read that option. The middle opens up. Good blocking that time. And just leading the way is big Adam Torville, 6'4", 300 out of La Habra. Cerritos knocking on the door. Third and goal. Well, third and inches, to say the least. I formation. Brown the deep setback. Davis under center. They hand it off to Brown. Brown goes off tackle on the right-hand side. And Cerritos gets on the board with 4.56 to go here in the first quarter. Yeah, Cerritos lost last week to L.A. Valley. And there were turnovers and there were miscues all through that game. And that's why they lost. They look like a different team here against Fullerton. We heard all week long that Cerritos is better than what happened last week against L.A. Valley. Although L.A. Valley was the only undefeated team last year in community college football in California. That's true. So Cerritos gets ready for the point after. Humberto Avila will try the point after. The ball spotted. Kick is up. Kick is blocked. So the Hornets blocked that one, Corey, and it looked like it came from Alex Marino right up the middle, but they've got him listed. Let's see who does block it. Cole McCarty. Is that McCarty? That right is up Cole the middle. McCarty. Oh, man, hit him in the gut. Let so me put it this way, Mark. Teams. He better block that. <laughs> and we have a special person with us, Tom Duff, sitting behind us. It's always nice to have Tom on the air with us here at sportsnetusa.net. A familiar face for many years on the campus at Fullerton College. So that special teams plagued Cerritos yes, not yesterday, last week. Last week as well, so we'll see what that does. And Fullerton, the defensive front is playing nice, Mark. They're putting pressure on Cerritos, but it's that secondary, that back seven for Fullerton is really letting them down on that drive. And we're going to give more credit to that Fullerton front five, that offensive line who put in work. Justin Mannyweather back deep for the Hornets. Manny Weather takes it at the goal line. Looks for the middle. Gets a little jet and tries to get to the right side. Corey, it looked like if he could find that gap, he might be going. But he does bring it out to the 34-yard line. And there's another flag on the play. Fullerton was the most penalized team last year in community college. You see him bring it up here, Corey. He goes to his right. Then he saves a gap on the left. Tries to cut back. And usually when you get a flag out there. Boy, and we've had a couple dead ball personal fouls in this game. A little overreaction by the officials? Uh, they're just trying to take control early, so they're not going to have any of that later on in the game. So that's going to bring the ball out to the 49. And that's what you hope is going on. But again, last week's game officiated very well. We went back to the last year's 
championship game against American River, another well-officiated game. Ladarius Skelton now in the game for the Hornets. So Skelton comes in at quarterback this series. Skelton hands it off to Hewlett. Hewlett goes off left tackle, gain of three on the play. And Mark, if you're wondering how to get the stats for today's game, right up to the minute, live stats at Fullerton College. On their website, you can go to the live stats page and follow along, and then let us know. Skelton comes back, looking to find an opening, throws it to Hewlett out in the flat. Hewlett turns the corner, puts his shoulder down, crosses the 45, gets down to the 41 yard line. It's gonna bring up a third down and one for the Hornets. Mark, you remember last year we were having a conversation about running backs who step out of bounds or running backs who finish that play and, and take on the defensive back for the tackle? Yep. Hewlett took on the defensive back. He, he's a very special guy. Skelton this time keeps it himself, goes up the middle. He's gonna get a first down. They're gonna mark him down at the 37. So Skelton in at quarterback. Abdul Hawk out wide to the right. Grossman in the slot on the right hand side. Skelton brings him up quickly. Throws it over to Marcus Grossman. Marcus Grossman gets hit, bounces off one, bounces off a two, and like a little VW getting hit by pickup trucks, he just can't go down. Yeah, Latrell Stearns was there also. Roderick, excuse me, Alex Fulmer. Good job of gang tackling. You hit once, you keep him there. You hit twice, you keep him there. The third guy, you bring him down. There's Stearns, Derek Thomas, and you finish up with Fulmer. Skelton looking to throw it downfield. Thought he had an opening. Steps in between the defenders and gets like Corey Nealon would say, a little slivery, right? Slivery? Now you got to slip through all the way. Oh, you got to go all through the way to yeah, be slivery? You got to get all the way. Oh, okay. So he's just a sliver? No, no, he just got tackled. Oh, okay. Third yeah. down and a long six for the Hornets. Robert Johnson runs off the field at the very end. Skelton rolls out. He's going to keep it himself. Turns the corner. We're going to get a flag on the play, and it should be holding against the Hornets. Easy call. And, Mark, you see what the difference between Wilson and Skelton. Skelton is a one look, and I'm going to tuck and run, or it's a design rollout and run. Wilson, a little bit more on the passing. You know, you got your one, two looks, and then if you got nothing, then you're going to throw. So we're going to take it back 10 yards. For the Hornets, that's going to take it back to the 43. So it's going to be about a third and 15 for the Hornets. Marcus Grossman goes over wide to left. Abdul Hawk goes with him. Robert Johnson wide to the right. Skelton in a shotgun formation. Big third down and 15. Skelton takes it down himself. Quarterback draw right up the middle. Goes north to south. First down, Hornets across the 25. Yeah, again, design run, Skelton. Fakes one, fakes two, and then takes off. You see the replay here, Mark. He's got a lot of speed out of Pine Bluff. And they're spread out on defense so much that Stearns had no chance but to bring him down. That time, Skelton goes across the middle of Marcus Grossman. And we've got a flag back in the end zone. As a matter of fact, we've got two of them in the end zone. It's going to be on Cerritos. Is it? Illegal substitution? Legal substitution on the defense. That penalty is declined. So they're going to take the play, and that brings it down. And you watch it here. It's Marcus Grossman catches it, picks it out of the air, and goes down at the seven. First and goal for the Hornets. They're up by one right now. Skelton brings them out. Johnson out wide to the right. Throw it over here. Who else to go to? Marcus Grossman catches it, spins, goes out of bounds. They're going to call him down at the two. It's going to bring up second down and goal. And Richie will get to you after this. Second and goal. Skelton brings him up. Once again, he was going to go to Grossman. Going to handle himself. Skelton in for a touchdown. So Ladarius Skelton, and it's the quarterbacks who both have touchdowns in this game. All right, Richie, down to you. What you got for us? Hey, guys, we've noticed a little bit of scuffling down here on the field between Fullerton and Cerritos. The Fullerton coach is reminding the players, keep your hands up, let them get the penalties. 
It that, has that's been to you touch guys. and go down there. Huh. Thanks, Richie. You saw that spearing and that lead with the helmet on this drive, and that was that unnecessary roughness call. You know what? I love our listeners, Mark, because we asked for stats. You know how I love that. Audience participation. Ball spotted. Kick is up. Kick is good. Fullerton, 9 for 13 on third downs this year. I love that. It's a community affair. It's all love. Well, you know, they would have a continuous amount of extra points if it wasn't for some of us that called for a shank last week in the first game here at Key to the County. Scott Giles, our AD, came in to say hi to Tom Duff. My statistician, Gabby Nealon to my left. Tom Duff behind me. I think Gabby's going to need food in a minute. Yeah, and I'm going to let you swing behind me since you've got enough room to do it. Oh, no, no, you know. We'll wait till the, you know, eight minutes to go in the second quarter. <laughs> that way we'll be out of here at halftime. Come back up for the third quarter, maybe. <laughs> so Fullerton gets on the board. It's the Hornets 14, the Falcons 6. You're watching Fullerton College Football on Sportsnet USA. Dot net in conjunction with Fuller to College TV. I tell you what, you want to learn about the industry? You want to learn how to work in the industry from the technical side? No better place to go than Fuller to College. That TV department is just magnificent. And the young men and young women that work out here, thank you very much for once again making us have a top quality product to show you at every home game. I like it. It's fun, best, isn't it? Best college broadcast in California. Off the side of the foot with the ball hook. It's going to spin back. And, Corey, that looked like one of your putts right down there. So, once again, Vince Brown back there. And they switch people out. Brown brings it back up. Cross the 20 to about the 22-yard line. Brian Terry makes the stop. New substitutions for the Hornets. And you see Brown let it bounce. Looks like it's going to go out. It comes back with a little backspin on it. Brown picks it up at the nine, trying to get away. Gets taken down once he crosses the 20. New linebackers, Devin Hessler, far side. Middle linebacker is going to be Cody Darrow. And outside, Cole McCarty. Out wide left is going to be Justin Garrett. With him is Gasser on the left-hand side. Davis under center. Goes back. Looks over here, throws it to Gasser. Gasser catches at the 29. Nice little move by Gasser. Hey, let me put my hand in you and shove you out of the way. 6'1", 180 out of Los Alamitos. He went to Los Al, so you know he can catch the ball and is a quality player. And, Mark, you see the receivers on the replay here. The receivers has a, has a distinct advantage over the Fullerton secondary. There's a missed tackle by Bullock, and he's brought down by Henley. Fullerton secondary right now is playing so far off the receivers that they have those five and seven route, seven yard routes to themselves, and they're going to pick that, pick them up. They want to continue to move the chains. That's all you have to do is matriculate down the field. Last year, we saw Fullerton secondary, and this is where the youngsters that Phil Austin was talking to us about. They don't have that confidence yet. Last year, D'Angelo Ross, those guys bump and run we dare you to beat us on the outside and not many times that they were beat on that outside well we heard brian crook say his concern was in today's game Corey, is exactly what you talked about down seven yards out pattern down seven yards out pattern and gasser is up after the hit walking off under his own power look like he's favoring that left arm he is the team's might be the team's best receiver he is the team's leading receiver Chukwumezi now on the near side wearing number two against Bullock. Stevenson in at running back. Now for the Falcons. Davis looks over the defense. Fullerton creeps up on the corner. They looked, the defense looked over at Brian Crooks and they just waved something off. Davis changed things up at the line of scrimmage. Here they come. Hand it off to Stevenson. Off center. Breaks the outside. One missed tackle. Two missed tackles allow that first down for the Falcons. Hello, my name is Ramondre. I'm going to go left tackle, and I'm going to run you over. Here's your replay. Ramondre Stevenson just bulldozing people. Breaks off the tackle there. Just hang on on for dear life is Kari Henley. So first down and 10 across the 50 at the 47. Chuck Wozmi comes out wide to the left. Out wide to the right is going to be Justin Garrett. 
Stevenson, the lone setback. Davis under center. Two-step drop. Looks for Chuck Wesby. Throws it up. Gets a little push. He's going to be out of bounds on the play. But, Corey, nice route. The ball's where it should be. It would be a first down. Yeah, Chukwu Mazie had one step on Bullock. But it was just led a little bit too far and out of play on that pass from Davis. Pressure up front by Corey Rose, one of the defensive down tackles. Near side is Montre Bonner. His other tackle mate is going to be Jamichael Moore. Or is that Cameron Proctor? I think it's Cameron Proctor on the interior. On the outside is going to be Joey Noble. Garrett goes out wide to the right. In the slot on the left-hand side is going to be Montgomery for the Falcons. Davis now in a shotgun formation, goes back. Throws it out to the flat, trying to get his back out there, Corey, and he just can't even get back the line of scrimmage. Great pursuit against Stevenson. Yeah, Cody, Dar Cody Darrell that time was not apprehensive at the linebacker spot. He read it well, accelerated from his middle linebacker position and comes up. Watch him there. He reads the screen perfectly and brings down Stevenson for a loss. So Fullerton. Changes out defense. Third down and 10, right at the 47 for the Falcons. Kennedy comes out wide left. Chuck Wisme outside him on the left-hand side. Davis, shotgun formation, looks. We get a flag on the play, and he gets swallowed up by the defense right at the 44-yard line. I thought Fullerton jumped. And we'll see. Nice eyes. Montre Bonner. And you, you know what's sad about that penalty? Montre Bonner jumps. He doesn't get the sack. If you jump that quick, you got to get in there and get the sack. But I guess he opened up. <laughs> he opened up two, two blockers because the running back had to come up, take Montre. Joey Noble was in there, but again, it's all for not. So, Finn. Tura Cortez, the tight end. Tight formation on left-hand side. Davis looking at it. It's third down and seven now. It's snapped on the ground, and all he can do is fall on the football. Now, Mark, does that count as a sack for Montre Bonner? Yeah, as yes, far as it, I'm concerned. Okay, yes, it does. So giving him that sack, that is two, 2.5, two and a half on the season. Low snap, Davis chasing it. And Mark, that actually looked like one of my putts because when I putt, the hole moves. I don't know if you know that. Well, yeah, and your ball wobbles like that too. So we're going to come to the end of the first quarter as we come to the end of the first quarter. It's the Hornets 14, the Falcons 6. You're watching Fullerton College Football on Sportsnet, USA.net, in conjunction with Fullerton College TV. A little more. Community College Football tonight on SportsNetUSA.net. Nathan Percy is replacing the franchise, so that means that Nate's got 12 people in a car with him when he goes to the Riverside game tonight. And LA Valley is back on SportsNetUSA.net. That's right. Our own Luke Hobbs is up in Los Angeles at 7 o'clock tonight with Ed Ford. Little video. That's right, LA Valley, the only undefeated team, is back on Sportsnet, USA.net. And Mark, I know Richie is going to give us what they saw in that first quarter positively out of Fullerton. And I know Ryan's going to give us what they saw positive coming from the Cerrito side. Justin Mannyweather back deep. Mannyweather will stand right at the 15. So we start the second quarters, the Hornet. They are up by eight. And you know what's funny about the Hornets last season when they won the championship? Their worst offensive game might have been the championship game. Against Just the American Man River? Yeah, against American River. Justin Mannyweather had a 50-yard punt return in that game. End over end, Mannyweather signals for a fair catch, takes it right at the 26-yard line. So we're just starting the second quarter. It's the Hornets 14, the Falcons 6. You're watching Hornet football on Sportsnet, USA.net. Richie and Ryan, the two R's down here on Sportsnet, USA.net. 
Risky and robust. Is that what they are? The R and R? I won't ask you who's look at they looked up here. They're trying to figure out who's robust. Skelton's still in the game. Hands it off. Hewlett takes it off. Right guard. Gain of a long one on the play. Mark, robust would mean overfilling, over full of knowledge. Oh, is that, okay, that's what they are. They're full of knowledge. Second down and nine. So you take the robust out there. We're risky for putting them on the air. Skelton comes back, looking to go out here. Looks, goes to Robert Johnson. Robert Johnson turns. He's at the 40. He's at the 50. Johnson, it's a foot race. 30, 20, 10. Touchdown, Hornets. Ryan Brooks, this is for you. Robert Johnson on a nice little out pattern. Left the defenders at the crossroads. Got what he came to get and took it on home for six. And you, you see, see it's right there, Corey. And then it's just, I'll outrun you if I can, and I guess he can outrun anybody. Yes, he can. You know what he picked up at the crossroads, Mark? Speed and more speed. So the Hornets get on the board quickly here in the second quarter. Skelton got a couple touchdowns today. Ball spotted, kick is up. And the kick is good. With 14.22 to go here in the second quarter, it's now the Hornets, 21, the Falcons, 6. You're watching Hornet Football on Sportsnet, USA.net. Ryan Osborne, you got something to tell us? I do, and it's about Cerritos. You guys asked what the Cerritos Falcons did well in that first quarter. Well, I think the offensive line gets a little love and hate. The hate comes from the fact that they have already given up two sacks in this game, but the love goes to the fact that they have opened up lanes for the running game for the Cerritos Falcons, and we've already seen the defense for Fullerton College have a little bit of trouble engaging the offensive line. Back up to you guys. Well, we'll see if the defense can keep playing solid in this game for Brian Crooks and, of course, Corey. You look at the quarterbacks, either one of them. Kane Wilson, Ladarius Skelton. They get tools to go to. I mean, they're good, but look at the talent that's around them. They're deep at all the positions here for Fuller to College football. Well, we talked to Coach Griffin, the wide receivers coach for the Hornets. He said last year's wide receiver unit, special. Well, this year in the first two games, they're looking pretty good. Yeah, they are. And they are deep. Hall back deep once again with Ashford. Hall and Ashford back deep for the Falcons. Little pooch kick taken to the middle field. Signals for a fair catch right at the 32-yard line. So it'll be first down and 10 for the Falcons. And we got Richie now on the Fullerton side. Hi guys, uh, you're asking about how, what I think Fullerton did well in that first quarter. What I really liked, and that's something that they did last week as well, the wide receivers doing a great job of blocking when, it, when it, they need to over there on their sides. Back up to you guys. And that's the thing, Richie, you're absolutely right. It has been those receivers that even if they're not catching a pass, Corey, they're throwing blocks to seal the deal for running back and their fellow receivers. So in a quarterback now is Bravo. Bravo going deep. Trying to go down deep to Chuck Wisby. Doesn't get it to him. I don't I keep getting the name wrong, don't I? You forgot the woo. Oh. Chuck Wisby. Chuck Womezi. Chuck Womezi. Chuck Womezi. Or Mezzi. But again, overthrown by you Bravo. Stacy. <laughs> <laughs> Stacy from Downey, that's right. And also, Mark, we have more listeners from Vegas and Asperia. So what do you say in football all the time when you get there on the sideline? Hi, Mom. Yep. Hi, Mom. Thanks for listening. Love you. Gear it out wide to the right. Bravo. Looking to find something. Trying to get a running attack going. Just seems they can't get it going as Ashford gets taken down, maybe after a gain of two on the play. Yeah, good Good team speed by the Hornets to adapt and rush after that as Bergueno couldn't come up with the tackle. Ashford, a nice nice move up front, nice move to get those two yards, but Fullerton's defense just played well. Watch the replay here. Fullerton gets up the line of scrimmage early and disrupts it. Ashford makes a nice move and trying to get up the field, but again, there's Kari Henley filling from the safety spot and making the stop. Fullerton 
They're not doing really any stunts, Mark, not doing any twists and turns on the defense, defensive side. They're just playing up straight up 4-3 and too deep. Bravo comes out. Ashford in at running back. Third down and nine. Bravo looks back, zips it over the middle. Should have been caught, Corey, right there. And when you're a receiver and you're at the 40, a yard away or so, you've got to make those catches if you want to move on offensively against this Hornet team. Thirteen thirty-one to go here in the second quarter. It's the Hornets, 21, the Falcons, 6. Justin Mannyweather back deep. Stand right at the 25. So the Hornets see what they can do. Once again, they're on that pace to get a huge amount of points. End over end. Manny Weather this time is going to take it. Backs up, sidestep, cuts the outside. It's got an opening at the 40, the 50. Gets taken down from behind right at the 46-yard line. He knew he had it. He grabs his head and says, Corey Nalen, I'm sorry. And Corey, you watch it here. He backs up, and when he catches it, he finds that opening, oh looks to God. the right, and Holy then he realizes God. straight up the middle, goes the outside. And he saw that hold. It was more, not more, not, not, not a hold. I'm not going to call that a hold by Roy Otto. I'll call that dancing, okay? I'm, I'm not going to call that a, a two-step, a waltz more, not a hold. So it was one, two, three, one, two, three, grab? No, no, it was grab, one, two, three, one, two, three. Keep grabbing, one, two, three. Hope, I hope he bought her a corsage. Isn't that what you do when you take somebody to a dance? I a little know, wrist I corsage? I can't dance. Oh, you never did that, huh? Okay. First down and 10. At the 40, flowers or not, the Hornets with Kane Wilson are back on the field. Marcus Grossman goes in motion from left to right. Wilson comes back. Lots of protection. Throws over. Easy little pitch and catch. A great back shoulder throw. Dabdul Hawk, who goes out and gets the ball. Wilson brings him up. Hurry up offense. Hawk stays out on the right-hand side. Uh, he was on the coach's show this week. Nice interview with uh, Avery Jordan. Yes, he was. Wilson rolls against the thing, throws over in there. Marcus Grossman catches it. That's going to be a gain of two on the play. Okay, we're going to go back to that diving catch by Abdul Hawk. Again, goes six foot two. Another out of state player makes that diving catch. Six two out of Cleveland, Seattle High School, or excuse me, Seattle, Cleveland High School. Xavier Green. Out here to the left with Robert Johnson. Green in the slot on the left-hand side. Wilson goes back, doesn't feel any pressure. Sets up middle of the field. Throws it, and Corey, when you're at the middle of the field and you have a tight end running up the seam, you get that caught. Yeah, watch Hoffman just use the seam. Good pass by Wilson. Good step through. An easy pitch and catch brought down at the 20. So we're going to get timeout against Cerritos. So timeout on the field, 12-24 to go. And Cerritos calls a timeout. It's the Hornets, 21, Cerritos 6. You're watching Fuller to College Football on Sportsnet, USA.net. You know, we talked about our quarterback last year against Cerritos. He threw to 14 different receivers last year. Jordan Hoy did against his Falcon team. You take Keen Wilson and you take Ladarius Skelton, they're throwing it to anybody, not a particular favorite on the field today. Yeah, three plays so far, 40 yards on this drive, and Fullerton continuing to move the, long, move the chains, and move the ball down the, down the floor, down the field. 14 first downs for Fullerton, six for the Falcons. So it'll be first down and 10 at the 20 for the Hornets. Mark, here's the difference between Fullerton and Cerritos today. Fullerton, four of five on third downs. Cerritos, one of six. So, and 65 total yards for the Falcons and 237 for the Hornets. That's, that's key. 
So the Hornets at 80% on third down conversions in this game. You know, with these technological advances, I'm going to need like a new phone or what do they call those tablets. So anybody out there that's listening, <laughs> <laughs> please keep texting me so I don't have to look up. Wilson gets a flag on the play. He was looking for Hawk on the right-hand side. Play whistle dead. So that was Robert Downs that moved a little quick. Latrell Stearns, the middle linebacker for the Falcons, has four tackles to lead the way in the first half for the Falcons. So Flemings and Downs over here on the left. Hawk over wide right. Wilson and shotgun. Keeps it himself. Fakes it to Hewlett. Hewlett comes out left, and Wilson keeps it this time. Cerritos knows what's going on. Man. It's back to line of scrimmage. It's going to bring up a third down. Second down along 14. Met by Stearns and Swain. The quarterbacks for Fullerton are perfect. Five for five for Skelton. Six for six for Wilson. Wilson brings him up, looks. This time steps up, throws across the middle of the field, and doesn't lead the receiver, throws behind Hawk, who can't catch the football. Yeah, plus I probably should have jinxed him. So now it's third down. So Dorsey now in the wide receiver. Robert Down stays in, down over here on the left-hand side. Next to him is Fleming. Hawk out wide to the right. Wilson looking for something. Picked off there in the end zone. Wilson gets picked off by Caldwell. And Caldwell tries to bring it out on that. Remind me not to read any more stats because that's a poorly thrown ball and an interception by Wilson. Better defense by Caldwell. He read the quarterback, looked at his eyes. There was no touch on the throw. It was a straight line drive. Got away from him just a little bit. Caldwell played the ball all the way instead of the receiver. That's why he stops that drive and comes up with a pick. But now you're in dangerous territory at the three-yard line. If you're Fullerton, are you aggressive enough to come after him? Well, I thought Caldwell actually caught it in the end zone and could have taken a knee, but he decided to run it out. Eleven forty-three to go here in the second quarter. Bravo comes out at quarterback. Hall in at running back. Bravo looks back, throws it over there. Nice little pitch and catch right there to Garrett. So Garrett makes a nice play. So he watches the quick little out to Garrett. Garrett takes it. Gets a gain of seven on the play. So Bravo in the game. He was the starter last week for Cerritos. Garrett comes out wide to the right. Hall in at running back. Deep setback. Bravo under center. They hand it off to Hall. Hall is just swallowed up in the backfield with no place to go. Can see who that was, Kareem McDonald. And Kareem McDonald, he's got another tackle for loss on the season. That's his third tackle for loss. So it brings up third down and seven for Cerritos after they get the turnover with 10.40 to go here in the second quarter. Fullerton changing out defensive lineman. Big third down play. Now that's Joey Noble taking McDonald's spot. Jamichael Green. Bergueno and Bonner. Bravo under center, looks over the defense. Big third down, checks out of it, comes back down, calls timeout, not comfortable with the defensive setup. So with 10, 20 to go. Here in the second quarter, it's the Hornets 21, the Falcons six. You're watching Hornet football on Sportsnet, USA.net in conjunction with Fullerton College TV. Corey Nealon, Mark Pavlovich up here in the booth. Richie and Ryan down on the field. Giving us a little 
insight to the game here at Chappelle Stadium. Yeah, and Ryan can attest to this. Last year, Fullerton in this situation, they had, as you see, the great crowd here at Chappelle Stadium on both sides. Last year, Ryan, you can attest to this, is Fullerton secondary in this situation were ball hawks. They went one-on-one. -on -one. They dared you to throw it, and when you threw it, there's a good chance it was going to be picked. They didn't rely on the offense in this situation. We'll get the ball back, give it back to the offense, let them score. They had the mentality of, let's go get the ball and let us score. So we'll get down to Ryan after this play. Third down and seven. Bravo brings it out. It's going to hand it right up to Hall, up the middle. Hall trying to stay on his feet. Conservative call by the Falcons here in the first half. Yeah, Ryan, what you got down there? We we're talking about a little bit ago, defensive backs last year for Cal or for Fullerton College, the best in the state, highest scoring defensive backs group in the entire state. When you talk to Coach Phil Austin, he said last year they were spoiled. This year they have to work their way back into the top ten. Up to you guys. Thanks, Ryan. So Justin Mannyweather, who felt like maybe the last one he should have taken in for a touchdown will stand right at midfield. We get a timeout by Coach Burns. Tim timeout Burns, for head coach for the reigning national champions here in community college football on sportsnetusa.net. I always call them defending. Reigning. He said, no, they're reigning, reigning. national that champions. King, queen, rulers, bullies of the block. That's a song by the Freestyle Fellowship. Okay. It's, okay, sorry. So they're the reigning national champs. We're the prince, and no, Richie no, and no, Ryan no, are the no. court jesters. They're the reigning national champions. We're just people that just tag along. They got nothing to do on a Saturday. And Richie and Ryan are still the court jesters. You know that. You know. You know that caravan that travels at the end of the pack. You mean up in Victorville? Wow. <laughs> Parks in Ed Ford's driveway on the weekends? The rock capital of the world. Manny Weather looking for the rock on this punt. Stands inside the 50. High snap. Lots of time. Low line drive. Manny Weather's going to take it. Singles for a fair catch. Bounces out, ricochet rabbit, turnover for the Falcons. And that's Brandon Gonzalez who was in the right place at the right time. The 6'4 freshman out of Montebello High, Montebello High School. I got it, you have it. Oh, thank you very much for the gift. I think I'll keep it, it's my size. Yeah, Manny Weather short-armed it on that one and the oiler from Montebello just was there. Now they got new life down 21 to six. So another turnover for the Hornets in this game. And they're not playing crisp football. They're playing like wilted lettuce. Well, you know, last year, the first couple games, they had these problems also. Now Cerritos needs to do something with it. They're trailing by 15 with 9.32 to go here in the second quarter. Bravo brings them out. Bravo. Looks, looks, pump fakes, goes over, overshoots the receiver who looked like it was open. That's Kennedy that goes down there, Corey. In between defensive backs for Cerritos. Taj Jones was there and also Kari Henley. So Bravo, the West Covina Bulldog, just overthrow, but you like him out there. Had a little touch, just a little bit too much. But Cerritos, you see, you think they just need that one play. They're only down by two scores. Tanner Gill, the tight end here on the right-hand side. Ex-Hornet for the Falcons. Bravo runs the delay, and Brown had no place to go. The door was locked, the lights were off, and they told him to go home. Yeah, Cameron Proctor out of Oxen Hill High School in Maryland. He does though, he does a nice job, another tackle for loss. I love this, I love new listeners. The replay, watch big number 99 get in there on the delay draw, fights off one block and says, hey, I'm here. 
brings him down. Third down and 16, and Cerritos has not been able to do anything with these turnovers in this game. The defense for Brian Crooks is playing above and beyond. Once again, throwing short, a little short arm, and Corey, the defense we said that was had some mystery to it, they're still coming up big when they need to. I don't know if they're coming up big, Mark. Oh, I think that, that was a poor throw by Bravo. The defense is playing so far off the ball, they're giving so much cushion in that two deep zone that all Bravo has to do is step into the throw and you got a fourth and three, make you think about going for it. The Fullerton front four has put enough pressure on him to force a bad throw, but again, if that's a good throw, and if these are good throws, they're moving down the field. So Bravo needs to be a little more sharp. Justin Mandyweather has to put a little more stickum on his hands. Signals for a fair catch says, this time I'm gonna haul it in and does that right at the 30 yard line. So with 8.35 to go here in the first half, it's the Hornets 21, the Falcons six. You're watching Fullerton College Football on Sportsnet, USA.net in conjunction with Fullerton College TV. Mark made a fan. And a fan asked, how you doing, Dale? Asked, Fullerton, do they always run this two quarterback platoon? And I explained to, to the fan, to Dale, how you doing, brother? Explain, last year they didn't have that. Last year they had Jordan Hoy, who was a combination of both and was a player of the year in California at the community college level. Yeah, and I mean, there was no reason to go that direction. As they run it off to Hewlett, Hewlett goes up the middle and gets a gain of four in the play. But and when you have talent, you utilize the talent you've got, and they've got a multitude. I mean, Photo, the third string quarterback, can play this game too. Coach Campbell showing a little more running attack in this game today. Hand it off to Hewlett again. Gets taken down and has his head slowly unscrewed as if you're taking the top off a ketchup bottle. Yeah, Gerald Hewlett, he has to come out, sophomore out of Lorton, Virginia. You know his mom is listening to every game and watching every game, so we want to say hello to her. As you see the replay, as he finds the hole, and there is wow. Ma'afua. Ma'afahu, excuse me, gets the face mask, and Hewlett comes off. I hope the young man just is shaking up just a little bit. We'll see him later in the game. And Fullerton, for the last couple of years since Garrett Campbell has taken over, has had a dynamic offense. People will say that the running backs have been lost in the shuffle. But if you look at them, they're still productive, and those little out powders make up for the run plays. First down and 10. Kane Wilson rolls back, looking for something. Can't find anything. Takes it down himself. Drops a shoulder and gets a gain of eight on the play. Yeah, and that's one of those plays that he couldn't wait as long as he wanted to as Jeff Joshua Jeffrey was doing the wheel route down the far sideline. Jeffrey in it, running back. Grossman out here wide to left. Kane Wilson said, well, you know what? That wasn't too bad. Let me take it again. I'll get us a first down. He does that as he goes across the 40. They're going to mark him down at the 38. First down and 10 for the Hornets with 7.33 to go. There you watch Kane Wilson getting that first down. Wilson comes back out, sets the offense, looks. Jeffrey rolls out again. They were looking for him. Goes to the middle. Ball's tipped in the air. Up. And nice defensive push by the defensive line for the Falcons to get to Kane Wilson on that play. It's going to bring up a second down and 10 at the 38. A new interior for the Falcons. John Collins on the interior as, as well as Titus Tauta on the outside, Omar Garcia, Latrell Stearns, and Joe Beck. Richie will speak to us in a second right after this play. Wilson goes out, pump fakes, rolls away, trying to find somebody open. Wilson's going to throw it up there, throws it up. Ball is up, tipped up, and Corey, I thought you were going to get the ricochet on that as Devin Fleming had an opportunity to pick it off, and he couldn't. And Devin Burrell, again, was there, floated back. He's a safety. So what do you tell your safeties? Don't let anybody behind you. And if they get behind you, you better knock the ball down. Well, Burrell knocked it up. Fleming couldn't catch up with it. Nice try by Wilson. I like the aggressiveness going downfield. Third down and 10. Wilson brings him out. Johnson now out here wide to the left. 
Wilson once again feels the pressure, steps away from the pressure, throws in the middle, and who gets it? The sure-handed Marcus Grossman, but he's down on the ground, and that's what they're going to call it. Richie, I know you're down there. You wanted to say something, so let's go down, Richie, wherever you're at, and let us know. Yeah, guys, the offensive line doing a really good job here today, blocking for Kane Wilson, giving him time to throw on passing plays, as well as doing a really good job of opening up holes and allowing the quarterbacks to run when they also want to do that. Back up to you guys. Well, we'll see if they block well enough on this big fourth down and four. Wilson goes back, throws over. Where else but the sure hands of Marcus Grossman he was the guy last year that emerged as a top receiver. Yeah, he was your go-to guy, that guy who plays that sure guy. For us old folks, that's Steve Largen, okay? For the new folks, you can say it's a Julian Edelman. Get a little motion. No, Wilson, a Kane Wilson. Corey, what a strange play because what you had happening is the Hornets thought they had illegal procedure in the backfield. Hewlett starts to move, then Keen Wilson starts to move. The ball gets hiked. There's no flag. There's no there's no whistle. And all of a sudden, Keen Wilson said, "Wait a minute. I'll watch this here. This is this is like weekend football. Oh, you don't want to tackle me? You don't want to hit me? Am well, I up? I'll go down." Everybody thought the play was going to be called dead. Like you said, the whistle never blow blown blue blowed. <laughs> Four new B words in the Corey Nealon dictionary. <laughs> they didn't stop the play. There we go. And so everybody didn't know what to do. And you know who you know who's watching? Who's liking who? the game right now? Who's that? Lori Wilson. There we go. Thank you. Lori. Kane Wilson's mom. So if he didn't get the connection, Kane's still a quarterback. Kane comes out. It was offside zone playing. Kane Wilson says, let me tell you, we want to start it really, really fast. And we're going to go to Noah Hoffman one more time. Again, a seam route. That's his second reception, second straight play, the seam. You watch the replay, the seam route on the first reception was on the right hash mark. This one, left hash mark, you can't get any more wide open. Lori, sitting up there in the Sierra, watching the game, hope you like that play. And what you like from Hoffman, Corey, is he was so wide open, he still ran his route so that the quarterback could put it where he was supposed to throw the football. Ball is spotted, kick is up, and the kick is good with six. 15 to go just in the first half. It's now the Hornets 28, the Falcons 6. You're watching Hornet football on Sportsnet, USA.net. Speaking of kicking, Mark, at halftime, Richie's going to talk to Coach Tim Burns as they go out into the locker room. And he's also going to interview a kicker that played on the Fullerton College 2013 team. Is, isn't that right? Well, he's supposed to, but, supposed you know, to. it's we'll Richie see. trying to find somebody. And then Ryan, he'll do whatever he has to do. Well, Ryan Osborne or Richie will have a guest here at halftime here on SportsNetUSA.net. Don't forget other games on SportsNetUSA.net tonight. Who well, we got, a little, we got a little Golden West College football coming on. And LA Valley is back, Corey Nalen. Ed Ford and Luke Hobbs traveling. Nathan Percy traveling to Riverside as Golden West takes on Riverside. Golden West, they always have, you know, they're, they're snake bit. They, they really are. They're a well-coached team, quality team, fundamentally sound team. But again, when you lose your starting quarterback, two, two, and, and second second string quarterback, that's tough in the first game of the season. Ashford takes it out of the air, cuts up the middle, has an opening. If he can cut to the outside, looks to dip. Hopefully he doesn't get caught from behind. He does, but a nice return for Cerritos up to the 35. So the Hornets up by 22 points here in the second quarter. So we watch Ashford go back on this replay, catches it, gets it right behind the 10. He's at about the eight. Looks for an opening at first, Corey. Looks like he was gonna have a gap to run. Looks to cut back, but pursuit in football can save you on big plays and that's what they got bravo comes back out at quarterback first down and 10 at the 33 bravo looks back fakes it down there rolls against the pressure flips it over here to cortez catches it cuts back in gain a tough gain of two yards to say the least and mark that's jamichael moore defensive tackle out of dominguez 6'3", 280-pound sophomore. 
he makes the stop. He rushes the quarterback, plays off of the quarterback, and still makes enough room. Watch him roam. That's the tight end on the outside, and you'll see 95 come in right there to make the stop. Garrett comes out wide to the right. Second down and seven. Bravo under center. Little flinch. Going to hand it right up the middle of the field. Staying at home, but a beautiful run. Refusing to go down. First down for the Falcons. And that's what happens when you don't get lower than the running back in nice form tackle. Didn't, Cody Darrell did not get his head across the body, and Brown was able to move. Or excuse me, Stevenson was there to move and pick up that first down. And again, when you watch Fullerton College, their defense, stout 4-3. That's their base. Very rarely will they get out of it. Garrett out wide to the right. Montgomery, the big tight end, is now in the game. Shotgun formation for Bravo. Stevenson trying to help out as Bravo just can't get the ball into his hands to make the play even work. It's going to take a loss on the play. Yeah, he sees the blitz coming, takes his eye off the ball, and he's trying to find a receiver who's hot. Watch there. Oh, actually, that was just a bad snap. So he goes down and gets credit for the sack will be Corey Rose. And new safety in there is David Farmer as Fullerton comes with their nickel package, their nickel back. It's going to be Jay Brown out of Roosevelt, out of Corona. So Garrett Montgomery out wide to the right. Bravo in a shotgun formation. Stevenson in the backfield. Second down and 14. They hand it off to Stevenson. Breaks away, comes off the right side, gets a nice little gain, picks up seven on the play. It's going to be a workable third down at the 48-yard line. Those quick hitters are negating the Fullerton front four rush. They're in the backfield two and three steps, so they're already behind the running back as he gets the ball. Watch, Good. Look how fast the left side of that line is up the field, and now the linebackers have to make the stop. They stop the clock just for a second. They're going to wind it again. That was Caleb Johnson who makes the stop. He's out there with Roy Otto, the other linebacker, 51. Kiki Mendoza now in the game in the slot on the left-hand side for the Falcons. Garrett over here to the right. Montgomery. So we get timeout by the Hornets. They didn't like what they saw, so timeout is called. With three minutes and 33 seconds, will the Hornets up by 22. It's Fullerton, 28. Cerrito, 6. You're watching Hornet football on Sportsnet, USA. Dot net. And if you notice number 37 on the field for Fullerton, that's Taj Jones. Taj Jones played the whole season last year. He got limited time, I'd say the first five or six games. Really came on the last four games and in the playoffs. In the playoffs, he had two big interceptions. One to seal the championship for the Hornets. He had five picks last year. And that's the type of depth that Fullerton has. As right now, he's not starting. Right now, he comes in there and he's making plays as on that second unit for the Hornets. And when you have a Taj Jones on the second unit, you got a deep squad. So the Hornets come back out on that quick timeout. They didn't like what they saw out there. Garrett comes back out wide to the right. Garrett in the slot on the right-hand side. Bravo win at quarterback. Third down and a long seven. Here they come, Bravo steps up, looks the middle of the field, coming back for the football, and Corey, you got to love a receiver that comes back to make a catch. Yeah, Chukwamezi makes the stop, makes the catch, and watch him come back. He's there, and a good throw by Bravo, steps into it, coming down, the only place the receiver can catch it, and the only person who can catch it is his receiver. First down and 10 to 43. Bravo brings them out. Garrett once again out wide to the right. Look at that tight end. They haven't used Tanner Gill. It's the tight end on the right-hand side. Bravo goes back. Quick step. Little two-step drop. Tries to throw it in short arms the pass. Again, somebody's open. The pass is not there. And Phil Austin doesn't mind that even if the pass is there to make the stop short of the first down. Second down and 10. And we were talking to the defensive coordinator, Brian Crooks, about, you know, that defensive unit, that defensive secondary, do you, secondary, do you mind if they're going for the pick? He says, no, you just got to make sure you get that pick. Candidate now out wide to the right. They run it this direction. 
trying to make the turn. Grab on a helmet, no flag on the play. They thought they were gonna get it too. As Stevenson comes over, nothing there in the penalty wise for no, the Falcons. There was no penalty. Oscar Bergueno was there. No face mask, he was just in the backfield. You see Bergueno number 90 comes up high. No horse collar, no face mask. Allows his defenders to come up. Farmer grabs a jersey and they bring him down. Third down and 12 for the Falcons. We're at two minutes and 20 seconds here in the first half on Sportsnet USA. Dot net. Kennedy goes out wide to the left. Garrett comes out wide to the right. Bravo in a shotgun formation. Looks over. Big third down and 12. He's got to get protection. Steps back. Has it. Rolls away and rolls right into the sack for the defensive line for the Hornets. Montre, what do you say today? Another sack for Montre Bonner. Number three on the season, actually three and a half on the season. And you watch it record, and he actually rolls into the sack as Bonner just manhandles his defensive counterpart. He's also out of Lorton, Virginia, South County High School, the same as Josh, Gerald Hewlett. And you know Lorton, Virginia is listening to us, so big shout out to you guys out there. Montre Bonner was really one of the guys who was a surprise last year for the championship team. Yeah, he played. He played, then he just dominated. And once Montre played well and came on on the other side of that defensive line, the defense took off. I mean, they already had the secondary. They already had the linebackers with Justin Parcells leading the way and Jamal Scott. But when you had Montre and Stepney, man, that was brutal. Yeah, and that's what they talked about too. Brian Crook said, my defensive line is excellent. It's Justin Mannyweather, who's had an interesting Experience. He's been on a roller coaster in this first half. Little of this, little of that. I'll keep it. You can have it. A man of generosity. It's over the head, and here they come. It's a foot race to the ball, and the Hornets get the stop they need with 1.55 to go here in the first half. If he can say, okay, what's my top two scenarios in this situation with 1.55 to go, left to go in the first half? and the other team is punting. Block it or run it back. Yeah, block it, run it back, or, okay, I guess this is your third option. As you see there. Well, that's what happens when you're Umberto Avila and you say, wait a minute, wait a minute. I know they printed it wrong. I'm five foot six, not six foot five. And the ball goes over your head. Never trust the stats here on size wise. Oh. Ladarius Skelton comes in, he's gonna run. Gets out of the tackle. Skelton says, you go to the end zone. I'll throw it to you. And he does that just there for a touchdown. Excellent play by Ladarius Skelton, who said, I will find a way if you get open to get you the football. And that's exactly what you, Corey, watch this. And there's a good rush there. And he gets away from the Sean Swain and the confidence. I mean, the secondary had good coverage, but you can only cover a guy for so long. And after that, Alex Fulmer, after five seconds, then the secondary's in trouble. Then the advantage goes to the offense. Robert Downs uses that to his advantage. Strong arm skeleton right there, throws it for a touchdown. So the Hornets take advantage of the muff punt. And now with 1.45 to go, it's the Hornets, 35. The Falcons 6. You're watching Hornet football on Sportsnet, USA.net. 77 points last week. We're now at 112 points so far this season for this Hornet offense here on Sportsnet, USA.net. Again, we want to just put our wishes out there to Coach Campbell. That's right, Garrett Campbell's dad. A little under the weather right now. And uh, sir, your son was thinking about you. I think he's saying something. Get well, dad, get out here quickly. Look what this team is doing. We want you on the sidelines with us. He sends his love for you as a son to a father. He says nothing but good wishes for you this day. So the Hornets well on their way to having maybe back-to-back -back 70 point football games. I love technology. No, I don't. I can't. Get... But if you go ahead and go to uh, Facebook, Corey Nalen, conversation on Facebook right now. 
on my page about the Fullerton College game. Got a lot of listeners listening. Got a lot of watchers watching. We love to have the the discussion, the conversations on Facebook or excuse me at on Twitter at SportsNet USA or at SportsNet USA Net. Little pooch kick right in the middle field. Signal for a fair catch taken there by Cortez right at the 40. So the big tight end knows what to do. And with 145 to go, trailing by 29, the Falcons need to find a little magic to make this game competitive in the second half. It's the Hornets, 35, the Falcons, 6. You're watching the game here on SportsnetUSA.net. Bravo brings them back out. Garrett out wide to the right. The big tight end, Ventura Cortez, on the right-hand side. Hall in the backfield with Bravo. Hall goes out in the flat. He's going to throw it to Hall on a swing pass, tries to turn the corner, puts a move on one, puts one on two, puts his shoulder down and gets up the midfield. So you watch Correll Hall come out of the backfield, goes a little deep, then he gets it thrown to him, finds room there from backs that are off of him, puts his shoulder down and gets a first down. Oh, just close. They're going to call it second and about a half a yard right at the 50. Bravo. Says, well, if it works one way, we'll go the other way. Throws it to Hall the other way. Cuts back in the middle, stays on his feet. The outside, down to the 35 for the Falcons. On those last two runs, you just can't help thinking of that old Colt who wore number 28 coming out of the backfield and doing damage. Nice little swing pass, and Hall uses his speed to get past Richardson and brought down by the ankles. First down and 10, right at 35. Bravo says, well, if it keeps working, we're going to go the other direction. Off his fingertips, drops it for an incomplete pass. And, Mark, why is that important? That was an incomplete pass but rather than a what type of pass if it went behind him? It would have been lateral if it had gone behind him. It would have been a live football right here. And you have a defender, well, actually two, that would have been there to be able to pick it up and maybe add some more points to the board for the Hornets. Second down and 10 from the 35. Bravo walks up to the line of scrimmage. Ashford now run at running back for the Falcons. Hands it off to Ashford. Ashford goes off a left tackle. Gain of four on the play. Coach Mazzotta waving his arm on the sideline over there. Been around for ever. Okay. Bergrano there, big number 90. Caleb Johnson finishes up. Yeah, TZ 206, like that play. Third down and seven. Down on the ground. This time, what do you do? Pick it up if you're Bravo, corral it, and then take off running gain of two in the play. It's going to bring up a fourth down and five at the 30. There you see him corralling it, trying to pick it up. So Bravo looking to do something as the clock is ticking. We're at 11 seconds. Get a little easy start there. Almost intercepted. And boy, I tell you what, if it was a horse coming out of a gate at Del Mar, they probably would have stopped the race as, as, as the tight end got off the line of scrimmage for the Falcons. But nevertheless, it's a turnover. It'll be first down and 10 for the Hornets at the 31. Five seconds to go here in the first half. It's the Hornets, 35, the Falcons, 6. You're watching Hornet football on Sportsnet, USA.net. Stick around. We'll have highlights at halftime. Richie and Ryan will have some interviews at halftime here on Sportsnet, USA.net. Richie should be grabbing Coach Tim Burns coming off the field at halftime. See what Coach Burns thinks about it as we take a knee and we come down to the end of the first half. As we come to the end of the first half, it's the Hornets, 35, the Cerritos Falcons, 6. You're watching Fullerton College Football on Sportsnet, USA.net, in conjunction with Fullerton College TV. Richie, you should have Coach Burns down there on the sideline. Hey, Coach, so 
Just basically, what do you think about the first half so far? You know, the score's great, but we've had three turnovers, which is unacceptable. You know, you, and we're, you know, if we do that, we're going to struggle this year. So hopefully we can eliminate the turnovers and, and, and do good. The defense played very, has played very good except for one series, so I'm pretty happy with that. What do you think about the offensive line so far? Doing pretty good, I think. Offensive line's a solid group, but they need to still pick it up. We need them to be a little bit more physical and get going a little bit. They seem a little tired and sluggish out there. All right, Torchwell, I'll let you get back to your team. Good luck in the second half. Thank you. Back up to you guys. So the Hornets not leaving off and starting again just like they did the last game against Santa Ana. Big amount of points in that first half. We'll see what they've got in the second half. So we're going to have Richie's down there on the sideline. Richie's going to bring us a uh, interview, guys, down on the sidelines. Richie, I know it's warm, but go ahead and tell me what you got to say. I'm here with Nigel Carter. Oh. I'm here with Nigel Carter, guard for the Fulton, Co Fulton College Hornets basketball team. Nigel, uh, last year you didn't get to play too much. You looking forward to this season? Yeah, I'm looking real forward to this year. We, uh, we had a good year last year. We're trying to do the same this year. Yeah, you guys uh, made it to the championship. Unfortunately, weren't able to bring it together, bring it home. Uh, what are you looking forward to for this season, basically? Uh, well, last year was just more motivation for this year. I'm just looking forward to getting, uh, getting to know my guys and just just a process as a whole. All right, you enjoying the football game here today? Of course, we're really good. Uh, we just gotta keep up the good work. We're playing good defense, we gotta keep the lead. All right, well hopefully we can bring home a couple of wins this season. Def definitely, that's the plan. All right, back up to you, Mark. Thank you, Richie. Over down there, as you see the song team, national champion song team down on the field right now for Fuller to College Hornets, another group of athletes on the field, student athletes. Of course, you'll hear me use that phrase all the time here at Fuller to College. Student athletes, artistic students that are out here, or students who are artists here on SportsNetUSA.net. Like I said, all the programs here at Fuller to College, be it the theater program, be it the program in science and technology and communication, here at Fullerton, we have great programs. You s maybe somebody that wants to come back to school over the years. You've been away for a while. Well, they've got a program for us older students like Corey Nealon and myself to start all over in education. Or maybe you're somebody that just got out of high school. You don't know what to do. Well, there's no better place to go to uh, find out what you want to be here in the community college level. My partner, Corey Nealon, just looked at me, stopped me for a second. He goes, hey, if the guys downstairs don't find an interview, uh, Marky, I'm sending one up to you so we may hear that here in the first half of this game as it's been all Hornets in the first half. It was last week against Santa Ana. It is this week again against Cerritos. Next week, we're on the road. College of the Canyons, Corey Nealon, myself, and my statistician, Gabby Nealon. Well, we're going to take a little road trip. That game will be audio only here on SportsNetUSA.net. Make sure you tune in with us next week. Catch a little community college football. And speaking of community college football, well, later on today, we've got Golden West College taking on Riverside, Nate Percy who is a fine reporter here in Southern California. Filling in for the franchise, Rashawn Haylock. I think he's doing something with a, a big school. We really don't care who they are, but that's what he's doing this weekend. And, of course, then L.A. Valley is back this week on SportsNetUSA.net. So don't forget, a lot of games this weekend on SportsNetUSA.net. I look downstairs, see our hard-working crew. Looking for an interview. Juan Cuevas standing behind you in the shade. Always like to get Juan. Of course, our camera people are uh, out cruising around. They're taking a little break here at halftime on sportsnetusa.net. So we'll see what we've got going on. Corey Nealon. Well, I guess I'm all by myself up here in the booth. We got highlights. Guys, let's let's go to the highlights till we see if we can get an interview going on where our camera crew comes back. We'll do an interview in a second. 
Ryan Osborne said he's ready for an interview, but Ryan, we got no camera crew down there. You just want to go audio? Sure, why not, Mark? All right. Right now we're here with Juan Cuevas, head athletic trainer here at Fullerton College. Juan, last week, over 100 degrees on the field. This week, not so much, but how do you keep up with all the guys? You know what? I, I have to give a lot of credit to my staff. I have a staff of about nine athletic training students, and they work in their tail off. You know, we have, you know, of course we have water, we have Gatorade, we had Pedialyte last week. Even the, you know, that darn uh, pickle juice that a lot of people like, you know, we had a little bit of everything. So the ice towels on the sideline, we have, uh, we had misters on the sideline too. So we had a combination of a lot of different things to try to make sure that the kids didn't dehydrate. I also, you know, throughout the week, I was, we, all of us were stressing the, the need for uh, the hydration, the prehydration starting Wednesday, Thursday, especially Thursday, Friday before the game. A lot of guys listen to me. They bought their Pedialyte. They drank it Thursday, Friday, and Saturday morning. So we re really only had a couple guys suffer for real minor cases of de dehydration last week. We were very fortunate. When you talk about hydration before the game starts, how important is it so that way they have that transition period going into the game? Uh, yeah, it's, it's number one. You can't just wait till the, the last day to actually have that. You can't wait till Saturday to hydrate. You have to prehydrate. hydrate That way your body is used to having that liquid. And then that way it kind of stores it to a certain degree, especially if you have enough uh, salt in it. Um, so, you know, the, the salt concentration is very important in those drinks. So that way you can store that, that water for that game day. So, yeah, so it, it was, I mean, we stressed it all week. And, again, it helped out. Well, thank you, Juan. We look forward to seeing you here in the second half and the rest of the season. Yeah, exactly. Well, I'm, I'm hoping to stay outside of the, of, of the field, right, because everybody stays healthy. <laughs> so anytime. Back up to you, Mark. Thanks, Ryan. Well, we got some highlights because it was an exciting first half here on Sportsnet. As we see there, trying to get outside. First Cerritos can't do it on that play. The defense going to, there's Skelton. Throws it right on the money to Robert Johnson. Robert Johnson turns and then it's a foot race. And I tell you what, these wide receivers for the Hornets have speed. You watch Johnson down that sideline. And again, another fellow receiver there to throw a block if needed. Kane Wilson comes back in and says, yeah, I got an arm too. Look what I can do. But that time he just overshoots it as it floats out of his hands just a little too quickly on the play taken there by Josh Codwell, Caldwell on a nice great interception on his part. Justin Mannyweather says, you got it, I had it, it's yours. Oops, wait a minute, follow the bouncing ball and you know what the song is. And Cerrito says, that's right, it's right up on the board. I win, play of the day. Then Skelton once again says, you know what, if you can keep on your feet, if you make sure you don't go down, well, you can make anything happen. It's called being persistent. That's what the Hornets do in that play. And they get it into the end zone. So that's what we have in the first half, and that's why we're at the score of 35 to six. That's right, it's the Hornets over the Falcon, 35 to six. Here on Sportsnet, USA.net. Don't forget, later on today, a little Riverside and Golden West College on Sportsnet, USA.net. That's gonna be audio. And then, if you love the picture thing, that's right, you're just somebody that, you know, you'd rather see it than try and imagine it. Well, we've got a little video going on tonight la valley back in town on sportsnet usa.net so make sure you stick with us all the home games this season will be video the tv department is graciously going to be with Corey neal and myself richie and ryan this year out at chappelle stadium so if you can't make it out here well make sure you show up and that's right i will for one of these home games the predictor of the national and state championship will be on the air with me. That's right, the person who said it last year on the coaches show, Emmett Benjamin Pavlovich will be on the air all, well, he's about that tall, he's about maybe 22 inches high right about now. Told Ryan Osborne last year through mental telepathy that the Hornets were going to win the state and national championship and that little guy is gonna be on the air with this older guy, you're gonna have the Pavlovich twins on the air sometime this season here on Sportsnet, USA.net. To Coach Campbell's dad, I can't say it enough, what a fine gentleman he is. It's a pleasure to be around him all the time. And we, along with his son, put out the best of wishes. Get well soon, we wanna see you out here at the sideline. To the coach's mother, 
thank you for taking care of that precious gentleman in your life and helping him get well again. We thank you very much, and we know your son adores his entire family here on Sportsnet USA. Dot net. So we sit at halftime. Well, it was all Hornets. It was all Hornets last week here on Sportsnet USA.net. And because they were so prolific last week here on Sportsnet USA.net, they are number one in the polls once again. They started off the season number one, and they stay number one. When you put 77 points up on the board, well, you should stay in the top polls when you look at them right now for Fullerton College. Fullerton College, number one in the polls. Right behind them, the team they played for the state and national championship last year, American River. American River last week beat Diablo Valley 67 to zero. And then a team we played in 2013 for the state and national championship, Butte is number three. Butte had a wonderful game last week. They beat Santa Rosa. 51 to nothing. And then a team that you can listen to tonight on SportsNetUSA.net, Riverside, sitting at number four. They beat Victor Valley 52 to nine. And then a team that, well, to say the least, there is no love lost between this program and the Hornet program. And there have been words on maybe the Phantom Pass here at Chappelle Stadium that allowed them to move on. The games that have been won down at their field. That's right, Saddleback is next. Sitting there at number five. They beat College of the Desert 41 to seven last week. Then Ventura, sneaky Ventura, always is much better than everybody gives them credit for. They beat Santa Barbara 44 to six. That allows them to be number six in the rankings. College of San Mateo, they're sitting at seven. They beat Modesto 47 to seven. And then that team that last year, for whatever reason, said to SportsNetUSA.net, don't come to our stadium, can't broadcast from our stadium. Well, guys, guess what? You play us here at Chappelle Stadium. That game will be video. There's only enough room for Corey Nealon and myself and Ryan Osborne and Richie between the four of us. That's about enough oxygen and enough headroom for three people, we squeeze in four. There's no room for anybody else, so the Saddleback announcers will have to stay home. That Saddleback team is sitting there. Oh, I mean, that Mount Sac team is sitting there at number eight. Sorry, Saddleback. I was speaking of Mount Sac. They're sitting there at number eight as they took on San Bernardino Valley and won that game 45 to 23. Long Beach at nine, Laney at 10, El Camino at 11, Fresno at 12, the perennial Northern champion, San Francisco tied at 12. And then the team that you can see tonight who were undefeated last year with Ryan Osborne at the helm as an announcer, LA Valley sitting at number 14. That's the poll right now as your Hornets are on top. They're number one once again, the reigning state and national champions here on Sportsnet, USA.net. Well, it's a pretty day at Chappelle Stadium. The weather's nice. Yeah, it's a great Saturday afternoon, and I guess if you were 5 to 55, it's a great day to play golf, go fishing, maybe a little tennis, but for most of us, it's being here at Chappelle Stadium watching community college football. I'll tell you, this is the Best entertainment you can find. And why do you say that? Well, most of these people are going to go to Division I, Division II programs. These are the young men that you're going to get to see play at that next level. Many of them from Fullerton moved on to Division I and Division II teams this past year. Jordan Hoy over at Old Dominion. Ryan Osborne, you're down there. You're looking a little perplexed, but if you want to chime in here, I mean, really, this is a program that moves people onto the next level. Well, yeah, Mark. I mean, you were just talking about Los Angeles Valley College last year. They currently have a 17-game winning streak that spans over the last three seasons, if you include the first one going up against Cerritos. They had an elite-level defense last year. They led the entire state in terms of overall scoring defense and tackles for a loss. They were the number one defensive team in the entire state of California. 
and now we're starting to see them play national or national conference teams and they're starting to beat national conference teams a team like Cerritos they came with 18 points in that fourth quarter and then when you talk about Fullerton College and moving players on Jordan Hoy last year leads the state state MVP you talk about him going to Old Dominion a host of Hornets ended up going to Division One and it really gives them the opportunity to advance at an education level, something that you harp on all the time. Well, Ryan, you know, and the thing is, you talk about you've been the host of the Coaches Show, and now Richie and you do the Coaches Show down there. You get to see people change all the time, Ryan. Tell you what, it's got to be difficult to be a head coach of a community college team because of the change-up on so many players on the field. Yeah, and you look at LA Valley last season, in fact, they had a coaching change just three years ago. Their coach, Coach Tucker, ends up taking them to the American Conference Championship. That's a game in which they won. They ended up going up against Southwestern Conference or Southwestern College, and they beat Southwestern College to take the American Conference Championship. But what happens, just as you mentioned, Mark, all of a sudden coaching changes take over as Coach Tucker moves on, and now LA Valley has to look at it, and they have to replace a head coach and they have that, that defense, once again, who showed up last week against Cerritos. But they're going to have to really figure things out here in a hurry. Well, Ryan, you know what? Let's let us not forget the other sports here at Fullerton College. Cross country, men, fifth place at the Palomar Invitational. Cross country, women for the Hornets, third place at the Palomar Invitational. And a program that you've known about, women's volleyball right now here for the Hornets, three and one this season we might be doing a few games for volleyball later on. Well, when you talk about volleyball, it was just two years ago that they made it into the second round of the California playoffs. And for when you also look at the other programs here at Fullerton College, you have to look at Coach Martinez's water polo team. They're already 1-0 to start off the season. This was a team that just three years ago, they won the state and possible national championship, depending on who it is that you're looking at. They want to get back into that championship caliber type team because two years ago, they make it all the way to the state semifinals and lose to Mount Sac. Last year, they didn't have the season that they would have liked once more. So Coach Martinez already won and know on the season. And we've talked about the water polo team. They have a very good coach, very good system, and they have a chance once again to get back into the state championship. And let us not forget, I mean, the men and women are both doing well in water polo. Let's not as Let's not forget the soccer team. The men aren't doing as well. They lost their last four games, but the ladies are doing pretty well for the Hornets in the game of soccer. Yeah, and for the women's soccer team, they just won their most recent game, and it's really just going to come down to how well they can be playing going into conference play. If they're able to go into conference play on a roll and they go up against a team like Santiago Canyon or a Saddleback or a Santa Ana, then they will be able to translate their momentum into conference play, and it'll bode well for them going into the playoffs. Ryan, I gotta ask you, what's the temperature like down on the field right now? You were in the hot one last week, a little better down there? Last week, like you mentioned, over 100 degrees on the field. Right now, it's a very cool 86. Well, the team's getting ready to come on the field. Ryan Osborne and Richie, they'll be staying down there, adding a little commentary as it goes on. Ryan, we wanna thank you, we'll be back down to you as the game continues, as both these teams with 2.18 to go come on the field for the Hornets. Ryan, all I can say is if it gets a little warmer down there, find one, grab an ice pack, and just pull a hammy and sit on the bench for the rest of the game. we Will do, Mark. Back up to you. Thanks, Ryan. Ryan Osborne, Richie down on the sideline, giving a little insight to these Fuller to College games this season. Like we said, don't forget about the other sports that are going back on during this time. It's not just football, women's volleyball. They're having a great start to the season. Women's soccer doing well. Men's soccer, they sort of stumbled backwards in the last four games, but we'll see what they can do. And cross country, well, well done down at Palomar, the Palomar Invitational in Oceanside. What a great cross country course it is too. They did very well down there. Some of the other sports that go on this time of season here on Sportsnet USA. Net. But now we continue with football as we get ready for the second half of the Hornets against the Falcons here on Sportsnet USA.net. Ryan, you want to say something? Well, yeah, right now we're here with Tom Deep. Coach Deep, how has your group performed so far? Uh, we're performing a lot better than last week. We're coming out, we're hitting the uh, players, we're tackling. 
um, I'm, I'm happy with where we're at right now. What are you looking forward to in the second half? Uh, I'm hoping we're going to get a couple sacks. And we're, we, again, because we're there behind a little bit, we're going to start coming after the quarterback a little bit. Thanks, Coach. All right. Have a good day. Back up to you, Mark. Ryan, I don't know why you got sweet sexy to go on the air with you, but good for you. Tom Deep, one of the nicest men you will meet on the Fullerton College campus. He really is an excellent person. Just another person that shows you the sports department, these wonderful group of educators. And that's what they are, people. They are educators. They are not just football coaches. They will guide these young men's life. And for all the coaches of all the sports, be it men or women, thank you again for what you do as educators and help all the athletes here at Fullerton College go on to the next level to find their success in life. We applaud you all here at SportsnetUSA.net. Well, let's get ready for a little second half of community college football here on SportsnetUSA.net. Mark Pavlovich, the invisible Corey Nalen, Ryan Osborne, Richie Melgoza, both down on the field for us here on SportsnetUSA.net. As we get ready to start the second half, it's 35-6. to 6, And don't forget, all our games are brought to you by Miller Toyota of Anaheim. New used Toyota, no better place to go than Miller Toyota of Anaheim. And what should you do after you buy that new car? Go buy Zombie Donuts. You're going to celebrate. You got yourself a new Toyota. Best way to do it? Three dozen zombie donuts. Don't forget zombie donuts during Halloween. They create some incredible, unusual, sweet delights that you may want at the Halloween time. Zombie Donuts, one of the big sponsors here on Sportsnet, USA.net. As we start the second half, it's the Hornets, 35, the Falcons, 6, here on Sportsnet, USA.net. Justin Mannyweather, back deep for the Hornets. Looking for something exciting to start things off. Deep going to take a knee. No, no, no. I decided to run it out. Suggestion was take a knee. They didn't. And it's going to be down at the 18. So Manny Weather comes running over to his partner in the end zone and said, no, no, no. Don't be running that out. But the decision was made. And the action took place just short at the 20-yard line. First down and 10 at the 20 for the Hornets. They send him out. Ladarius Skelton comes in at quarterback. Gerald Hewlett at running back. Grossman in the slot on the left-hand side. Robert Johnson out wide to the right. First down and 10 at the 18-yard line for the Hornets. They hand it off to Hewlett. Dances to the right. Goes off tackle. Gets taken down there after a gain of two. So stopped on the play. Gain of four on the play. Second down and six. Skelton brings him out quickly. Skelton runs against. Hewlett's going to carry the lead. Skelton turns, stays on his feet. Ball's out there like a loaf of bread. He puts it in the basket and gets a first down across the 40. So Skelton with the ball hanging out there but doesn't lose it. And the young man from Arkansas shows us how prolific. And you can see it here. On this, Skelton in the backfield, takes it, goes around. Hewlett's going to lead the way around right side, and then he's got it out there just a little, doesn't get knocked out. Hand it off to Hewlett. Hewlett goes up the middle, crosses the 45. So Jared Hewlett runs it across the 45. Tackled there by Alex Fulmer. Fulmer makes the tackle for Cerritos. Second down and six. Skelton goes back, looks, throws over the middle, taken out of the air there. Nice stop on the play defensively by Josh Caldwell, playing defensive back on that, trying to knock the ball out, but just can't do it. First down and 10, sticks keep moving for the Hornets. So they come out with a bang-bang offense to start this second half. Skelton goes back, steps up. Feels pressure, goes down. Marcus Grossman lays out, just can't pull in the football. So the little VW that's got a Porsche engine in him just can't get enough speed to pull it in. It's going to bring up a second down and 10 right at the 49. They change everybody out quickly. 
Robert Johnson trying to run off the field, get off as fast as he can. Skelton waits for him. Ladarius Skelton goes back. Looks, going to throw it over here one more time. Justin Mannyweather takes it, puts a hand down. Mannyweather across the 35 all the way down to the 34. So Mannyweather gets another first down for the Hornets. Stanley Norman getting roughed up a little. Skelton looks over. The top hat says, can I go? He said, anytime you're ready, run that clock. Skelton says, then let's go. Goes back, throws it out to Justin Mannyweather in the flat, who is covered well out there in the flat by Sean Swain, the linebacker. So Swain's with Mannyweather. Mannyweather can't go anyplace. It's going to bring up a second down and 10. 13-25 to go here in the third quarter. It's the Hornet 35, the Falcons 6. And Mark, down here on the sidelines, things continue to escalate between both teams. A lot of extracurricular activity. Fullerton College once more just putting their hands up, trying to draw the penalty. We'll keep an eye on that, Ryan. Thank you. Let us know what the coaches think as this game goes on. Skelton, once again, keeps it himself, goes up the middle, tries to get away from one, gets taken down there by Alex Fulmer. So Fulmer in on the tackle on Skelton right at the 30. And again, words are going on in the field. As we're getting Robert Johnson having a discussion, they tell Johnson, get back on the line of scrimmage. Skelton. Looks over, you've got to allow the defense to match up to you. Johnson out wide to the left. Grossman out wide to the right. Changing linemen quickly, in and out for the Hornets. Samuel Davis comes in quickly at right tackle. No, they're gonna bring him in at guard. Skelton at quarterback. Looks, pump fakes, feels the pressure, runs away from the pressure, has the opening. Looks where he's going, pump fakes again, sidesteps one, follows his blockers down the field and gets run out of bounds at the 15. Ladaria Skelton showing you a little bit of magic that came out of Arkansas. You watch Skelton on this, he's gonna drop straight back, looks, they're covered, tries to go over the middle, goes to the outside, then picks up his receiver looking for a block downfield and gets it. First down and 10. Skelton goes back, looking to go to the corner. And Robert Johnson, it was a stop and go. Robert Johnson stopped and never went. Incomplete pass. Second down and 10 for the Hornets. 12, 37 to go here in the third quarter. Second down for the Hornets. Skelton looks over the sideline. Manny Weather comes in. He's going to be in the slot over here on the left-hand side. Devin Fleming out wide to the left. Skelton comes, feels the pressure, gets away from the pressure, sides and ball comes out. It's on the ground. Picked up there, another turnover by the Hornets. And that time with Skelton having the ball out like a loaf of bread, somebody said, I need a bologna sandwich, and they got it on that. Watch Jordan Thomas. He's the one that said, wait a minute, is that pumpernickel or wheat? Skelton said, I'm not quite sure. No, it's rye. I think I'll throw my bologna on that, cover it with a little mustard. Hmm, I'm going to pick it up right about here and take a rest, eat my lunch. And hey, guess what? We got a turnover on the play. 12, 28 to go, and the Hornets once again give up the football. Quentin Davis back in at quarterback. So Davis back in. Davis under center. Turn the corner, sidestep taken out there. Hall makes it over. About to the gain of eight on the play. So Quarrell Hall gets a nice little run on that one. In the game now. Kennedy as a wide receiver. He's going to come out here wide to the right. Tanner Gill, the tight end, left-hand side. Hall, still the deep setback. Davis under center, looks, steps back, takes that two-step drop, throws it over here, overshoots. Kennedy, who's wide open on the play. It's going to bring up 
second down. So every once in a while when they've got things going, it just shortens up just a little for the Falcons. Second down and 10. Hornets, 35. Cerrito, 6. Just started the second half of this game here on Sportsnet USA. Dot net. Garrett comes out wide to the right. Kennedy in the slot on the right-hand side. Davis under center. Hornets come up with the linebackers. Here they come. Here comes the pressure. He takes it down himself and goes nowhere. As great closing action by the defense holds him to a yard gain on the play. So you watch the defense come back in and make the stop. The mystery man back up here in the booth with me. Be on the air in a few minutes, Corey Nalen. Garrett comes out wide to the right. Mendoza in the slot next to him on the right-hand side. Davis, the quarterback, goes back, trying to get some pressure. Pump fakes, it goes up, almost taken out of there. And boy, there was excitement on the field as it was a jump ball and the Hornets almost come away with it as David Richardson makes the play out of Rockwell, Texas. So Richardson comes up as a defensive back and says, no, I think I want it more than you, and almost gets the steal. 11 09 to go here in the third quarter, and Justin Manny Withers says, okay, guys, get ready. Start that engine. Here comes a little excitement on this punt. Nice snap, high off the end of the foot. Manny Weather singles for a fair catch, goes down and get it. They're gonna mark him down right at the 44. So with 11.03 to go here in the third quarter, it's the Hornets 35, the Falcons six. You're watching Fullerton College Football on Sportsnet, USA.net. Mark Pavlovich. Corey Nealon, Ryan Osborne, Richie Melgoza. Helping with all the action today here on SportsNetUSA.net. Kane Wilson comes back in at quarterback. Gerald Hewlett at running back. First down and 10 at the 44-yard line for the Hornets. Hewlett gets it, goes off the right side, cuts back in the middle. That tackle stays on his feet, sidesteps, still won't go down, gets taken down. At the 47 as Hewlett comes up big. Get holding against the Hornet as you watch this on the run. Hewlett goes out to tackle, comes back in over the guard section, stays on his feet, looks for a block on the outside, but all for naught. Holding on the play that moves the Hornets backwards. Wilson looks over. It's going to bring up a second, first down and 20 for the Hornets now. Wilson starts Grossman in motion from left to right. Wilson goes back, across the middle of the field, gets it there to Grossman, who goes down like a third baseman, Corey Nealon, and picks it up. And Grossman, another nice catch. He might have the best hands on the team, might have had the best hands on the team last season. Again, Marcus Grossman, one of the better players you'll see out there out of Frederick, Maryland, 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 as he makes a catch as Wilson with the second down and five. Doesn't look like the penalty hurt him. Hewlett in motion out on the outside, and he is hit and almost taken down. It is taken down by the cornerback who came up and filled, Stanley Norman out of Sarah High School. And that play is a setup play, Mark. That's one of those plays where we're going to throw it out in the flat to Gerald Hewlett. You're going to come up, you're going to come up. Then we're going to come and hit you with the tight end either on a corner route or that second wide receiver, Hawk, Abdul Hawk, out there going deep. Wilson looks over. Third down and nine for the Hornets right at the 45. Wilson getting good protection. Steps up in the pocket. Looks from the middle of the field. Corey, he misses Marcus Grossman. You don't think no, he was going for Marcus I, I Grossman? I thought he was going. He took a lot off of it. So Abdul Hawk was behind him five yards behind Grossman in between the man-to-man -man coverage. Watch his release point. He oh, floats he it over and sees Hawk 
when he's making his break. So that's a first down for the Hornets. Right down at the 34-yard line. Wilson looks back over, gets ready. Hewlett's still in the backfield. Been doing the majority of work as a running back. Stutter steps, gets through, gets a gain of four in the play. Didn't get any stats at halftime, so I don't know what the running attack has done so far in this game. I'll get that for you. We probably won't get those stats because they have live stats, so we'll see if they'll be able to print them. Second down. And a long five and a half for the Hornets, right at the 30. Wilson looks over. Once again, it's a passing attack. Wilson getting excellent protection. That time, Marcus Grossman says, it's mine. And they're going to call touchdown for the Hornets. Yeah, 25, 30 yards away again. Kane Wilson knows where he wants to go. He's waiting for his receivers to get open. Marcus Grossman, his first touchdown of the season, making his second touchdown catch on the season and a beautiful 30-yard catch from Kane Wilson. So 8.35 to go here in the third quarter, and the Hornets start the second half the way they did the first half, marching down the field methodically to get on the board. Ball is spotted, kick is up, and the kick is good. So with 8.35 to go, it's now the Hornets 42, the Falcons 6. You're watching Hornet football on Sportsnet, USA.net. Corey, there it is. And you see Marcus Grossman go up and get the football. Corey Nalen's going to go down, grab some stats here. So he let me know. Because Corey, uh, okay, Ryan, what do you got going on the sideline down there? Mark, a little bit earlier, you asked what the coaches thought about the chippiness. Well, Coach James Griffin pulled his wide receiving core aside and told them, force Cerritos to look at the scoreboard. He said, just allow them to be able to go and try to in instigate a fight with Fullerton College. He said, just leave it alone. As long as they continue to just do their job, the referees will work it out for them. Back up to you. We'll see if that happens. Corey, uh, it's no stats at halftime. I got to know what the running attack looks like. It looks like Coach Campbell has tried to get the running attack really involved in today's game. Skelton had 31 yards. Hewlett had 26. Kane Wilson had 19. That was it. Wow. In the first half, they had 70 yard, 71 yards rushing. You see they're picking up the pace here. If they get over 100, 150 yards per game, that's going to be something that's successful for Fullerton because they're going to get 300 yards passing. Okay, In years past, it was if they get 200 to 250 yards on the ground and 200 yards passing. So the Hornets get back on the board. Taken out there, turning the corner on. That is Correll Hall. So Hall back deep. And again, you see a little shoving going on, and you wonder how much talking is going on the field. What are some of the other stats? Because I had none at halftime. Okay, for the Falcons, Isaiah Bravo was 4 of 11, 35 yards. Quentin Davis, who's back in, 5 of 8, 65 yards. The one touchdown came from Vincent Brown on a one-yard, or excuse me, 16-yard jaunt. And we do have Davis back in there. Leading receiver with 15 yards was Hall, and that was on one of those plays at the end of the half. Brown back in at running back. Deep set back. Garrett comes up the line of scrimmage. Cortez, tight end, goes in motion from left to right. They hand it right up the middle, trying to get the running game going, refusing to go down there on a nice, tough run by Benson Brown. Leading tackler for the Hornets. Not in forever, fellas. Watch the one. What are we kidding? Nice sound down on the field. That was Tom Deep. In our ears, Tom Deep. Second down and five, right at the 25. Davis brings him up. Brown's still in the running back. Garrett comes up. The tight end moves from right to left. This time they take Brown. Going to take a sweep on it. Try to go to a sweep at Corey. That was textbook if, play by the corner. If you have a replay of Kari Henley playing that play, it is in check. They call it Dobra. Hurrah. Good play by Kari Henley. Watch him scoot down the line, and he knows it's going to be a pitch. Watch him fill the gap if we got it right here. He'll fill the gap right there and shoots through. 
That's perfect. That's textbook. That's how you draw it up. I wish I had a better cliche. Third down. Shotgun formation. They're going to try and spread it out. They really haven't tried to go deep against the Hornet in today's game. We'll see if they do. Because Jermichael Moore has one and a half sack and Montre Bonner won. Well, I thought Bonner had more than one. As far as you and I are concerned, he had more than one, didn't he? Uh, you know, at least one and a half. I thought he had two, and I thought Jermichael Moore had two. I thought they had two each, but, you know. Johnny Photo is warming up on the sideline, so it looks like he may go into the game. Out of Colorado. Warming up with David Hendrick. So Photo and Hendrick on the sideline. Penalty on the play, moves it back. Third down and 12 for the Falcons. They're going the wrong direction. Instead of going north, they're going south here at Chappelle Stadium. Davis goes back. There's the deep pass, Corey. And that's what I was looking for, yet nobody was on the same page on that pass. No, and Brian Terry was step for step. That was a one time Fullerton played bump and run coverage and it worked out well. And so they had the down marker wrong, too, so it was third down. It's now fourth down for the Falcons. And Fullerton is really taking Cerritos out of the ball game. This is something that they really wanted to do coming into this game after last week's key to the county win over Santa Ana. Even though it was 77-28, the defense did not play well. Justin Manyweather sneaks up about the 45. Now he sneaks up to midfield. Backspin on the ball. Manny Weather crosses midfield and catches it at the 47. It'll be first down and 10 with 635 to go in the third quarter. It's the Hornets 42, the Falcons 6. You're watching Hornet football on Sportsnet, USA.net. And in that first half of play, 301 total yards for the Hornets, 39 plays, 78 total yards for the Cerritos Falcons. That's not going to get it done. Skelton and Wilson combined for 230 yards, 116 for Skelton, 114 for Wilson. Two tosses for Skelton, one for Kane. And like we said, Skelton had 31 yards rushing and one touchdown. Robert Johnson, two catches, 75 yards, one score. In the first half, Marcus Grossman, six for 37. He had two more here. He's got eight receptions for 63 yards and one touchdown. Johnny Photo in the game now at quarterback for the Hornets. Hands off to Hewlett. Hewlett stutter steps. Wanted to get a block from Marcus Grossman on the end and Grossman didn't want a flag so he throws absolutely nothing on the play instead of allowing the defender to run into it. Delton Crandall up front, number 69, the left guard. Rashad Harris, the center. You see 65 there, Jacob Jankoviak, the left tackle. Loss of four, photo. Shotgun formation, starts Hewlett from left to right. Photo goes back, throws back to Marcus Grossman. Grossman gets a block, steps away from one, steps away from two, gets back to the original line of scrimmage. And finish that offensive line. Uh, right tackle will be Muhammad Jefferson, number 70, pointing out direction. And 53, the right guard, you see squeezing in there. And you say squeeze is Samuel Davis, 6'4", 340 out of Ganesha High School. Johnny Fono wants to send some love to his grandmother who was texting us last week. They're on sportsnetusa.net. Xavier Green now quickly comes in the game, goes to the far slot. Photo gets ready, calls it, gives it to Hewlett. Hewlett comes up the middle, trying to run the ball. Gets a gain of a half a yard. It's going to bring up fourth down for the Hornets. And on that one, Hewlett's got to follow his block. That time he tried to cut it back to the inside. He follows his block. He has a chance to cut it to the outside or at least pick up a few more yards. So words are being said. Players are getting pulled back. And, Corey, it's really that thing now where you start talking to each Omar Garcia comes off the pile, and, and somebody must have said something to him because he wasn't happy. For yeah, the him Falcons. and Muhammad Jefferson were going out, and that's not needed. It's 42 to 6. 441 left in this third quarter. And you saw last year's game was really a coming out party for D'Angelo Ross. I mean, he really solidified his spot as a shutdown corner. 
Luis Aguilar back deep for the Falcon. Signals for a fair catch amongst the group of Hornets right there. So it was Dior Denson that was back there. So Denson calls for it. It's going to be down at the 18-yard line. 4.15 to go. It's the Hornets 42, the Falcons 6. Remember, L.A. Valley tonight at 7 o'clock. That game is video here on SportsNetUSA.net. And then also at 7 o'clock, a little audio. Nathan Percy calling the action for Golden West College against Riverside here on SportsNetUSA.net. First down and 10. At the 18 for the Falcons, Garrett moves up. Cortez goes out wide, right to left. Now he comes back. Fake pitch by Davis. Goes to the tight end. The tight end has it in his hands. And just like most of us, letting us five slip through our fingers, well, he dropped that $5 bill and got no change for it at all. I don't know where you're from, but $5, that's not slipping through anywhere. That's Lester Hayes Stickham style. Well, I know if it's $5 with you, it's hard getting it out of your hand. It's not it's gonna be not gonna be in my hand, Mark. I have to pickpocket. <laughs> Garrett out wide to the right. Davis trying to get his team to do something, just hasn't been able to get it. Stevenson back in it, running back for the Falcon. Fakes it to Stevenson. Goes out and throws her quickly to the flat to Kennedy. Kennedy comes down the sideline. It's a first down on the play. Another penalty on the far side, and it's going to be unsportsmanlike conduct, unnecessary roughness on take your pick, Fullerton or, or Cerritos. And a nice little flat pass out to Kennedy. Gets the first down. Devin Hester was chasing all the way, so he never had the chance. But there's your penalty right there. It's going to be interesting to see who they call it on or if they offset it. It doesn't look like they're going to offset it. looks like they're going to call it on Fullerton, and that was Joshua Fisher. Okay, so not Joshua Fisher. They said 42, Jacob Jones. So another penalty against, and, and what were the penalties like? Did you, did you keep the stats? Because you were talking about how Fullerton gets penalized. Four, seven for 45 in the first half. Yeah. So Garrett, who's been out wide to the right a lot for Cerritos, really has had a quiet day when you think about it for a wide receiver. So again, they hand it up the middle. Stevenson goes across, almost gets to the 50, gain of a small four on the play. Plus, you look at it as Jacob Gasser got hurt in the first quarter, and he hasn't returned. He hurt his left arm. So he hasn't returned, return, and that's a big play weapon. That's, you know, your leading receiver for the last two years out of the game. Second down and six, right at the 50-yard line. Little confusion on there. Mendoza now goes from right to left. Now Mendoza comes back to the right-hand side next to Garrett. Wasn't quite sure where to line up at. Once again, they hand it off to Stevenson. This time off a right tackle. Breaks a tackle, almost breaks two, but breaking that tackle allows him to get a first down. Eight yards on the carry, and Fullerton's gonna come back with their starting unit, Caleb Johnson, Cole McCarty, and Roy Odo as the three linebackers. Ryan Simpson steps out, as well as Devin Hessler. Two, to get, fifth. I was gonna say, gonna try to get more of that defensive setup in just a moment. 2.50 to go. Here in the third quarter, 42 to six. The Hornets on top. Stevenson, the lone setback. Now they move Garrett up. Tight end gets off the line of scrimmage, goes from right to left. He comes back again. They're going to run it. Once again, off that right tackle, Corey. They think they have found a spot. Ball comes out. And they're going to call the runner down before the ball came out. Cameron Proctor was at the bottom of the pile. But they're going to say forward momentum was stopped. He was on his back like a turtle, coughed up the ball. But they're going to say forward momentum has been stopped. Devin Hessler back in there. And up front now for the Hornets, Kareem McDonald near side 5-2. Proctor number 9-9. Nine, nine. 
63 is Corey Rose, the right nose tackle. And on the far side, we'll get the right defensive end, the far side defensive end in just a moment. And that's going to be Shane Darso. So Cerritos, second down and eight at the 40. Trying to move down the field. Yeah, that's right. They're playing hard all day long. Once again, give it up to Stevenson. He goes off left tackle this time. Straight dive play, big dive play for a first down. Remember years ago when Mount Sack had such a quick offense, or excuse me, a quick defense, very aggressive flying across the line of scrimmage. Fullerton used quick hitters to combat that and picked up positive yardage. And that's what Cerritos is doing against Fullerton now. Fullerton is so aggressive. They're getting three yards in the backfield before they realize, well, the guy's got the ball going past me already. Tanner Gill now a tight end over here on the right side. Gill, X Hornet, Justin Garrett over on the right, wide right. See if the Falcons stay on the ground. They're moving the ball. No, as soon as I say that, they go up in the air. Who do they go for? Garrett, overshoot him in the end zone. Yeah, and that time they got out of their cover too because of the short field. And there's eight corners, one on one. The seams and in the middle, the safeties are just going to come up. So Quentin Davis trying to find somebody that he can lay the ball right in their hands. Hasn't been able to really do that in today's game. Yeah, new safety is Jacob Jones, number 42, with David Farmer. Far side cornerback. Well, near side cornerback is Brian Terry. We'll get the other in just a moment. Garrett Ventura Cortez on the right. Cortez once again goes in motion from right to left. Here come the Hornet on the pitch to Stevenson. And he has taken down in the backfield on a horse collar tackle. And that's why the flags come flying out everywhere. Yeah, Roy Otto, good job of getting in there. They shot the gaps, both outside linebackers shoot the gaps in there and here's your horse collar right there that's blatant that's easy to call so that's going to be a personal foul horse collar against the hornets so 117 to play in the third mark 42 to 6. you know brian crooks doesn't want to give up another score no and, and you know the whole thing too is the turnovers are going to be a big bugaboo at practice this next week because they get ready to go up north and play a little College of the Canyons football next weekend here on Sportsnet, USA.net. We're traveling. We are. 6 p.m. kickoff? Yep. Means we leave at 10, go have breakfast. No, I've got to leave after class. Oh. So we leave at 11. <laughs> then we have breakfast. Then we stop then up there snack, for lunch. Then a snack lunch. Then dinner just before. Dinner's after. Oh, okay. And then a Gabby and I sleep for a while. We're all set. Davis, shotgun formation. First down and 10 at the 15. Wish we can talk Ryan Osborne to head up with us. Might be able to. See what happens. Go back. Misdirection playing Davis. Corey, it almost looked like one of the backs should have taken the football from him instead of him keeping it as the quarterback on the play. Yeah, that was a busted play. And speaking of Brian Crooks, there he is, a defensive coordinator for the Hornets. Took over for Casey Mazzotta about 10 years ago. Has it been 10 years? Yeah, easily. Wow. Okay. Yeah, I look the same. No, you, cha you, you shaved off that goatee, and now you look younger. Oh, thank you. Mark was 75 years old when he started this. And now I'm 77 <laughs> years old. Second down and 10, right at the 15. Davis trying to do something. Here come the Hornets on a blitz. And, Corey, they run a run blitz where they hit every gap, and the runner can go no place on the play. Now explain that out in 4-3 when they hit every gap on a run blitz. So what they do is the linebackers choose a gap, and the down linemen are assigned a gap. And so you hit the gap. You don't play the offensive player in front of you thinking that that running back will choose one of those gaps. There are six of them on the line of scrimmage that you will fill. So we get time out as this quarter comes to an end. And as we come to the end of the third quarter, it's the Hornets 42, the Falcons six. This is Hornet football on Sportsnet, USA.net. And like all our Hornet football games, this game has been brought to you by Miller Toyota of Anaheim. New and used Toyota, maybe it's that time to get some new tires on that Toyota. 
or maybe anything else. Miller, Toyota, of Anaheim. And I don't know, but I don't see Ron Osborne or Richie down there. They're probably finishing off those zombie donuts. That's from okay, our Mark. Other they got nothing to say. I got something for you. Okay. I'm I ready. guess I got something for you. U.S. Open. I know nobody knows anything about tennis. That lateral movement kind of weak here on Sportsnet, but that's okay, guys. Sloan Stevens wins the U.S. Open over Madison Keys. This is the first time I thought it was 1981. The last time they had four uh, U female U.S players in the semifinals and the finals. You say it was 1965. If anybody out there listening, please check. One of us can be wrong. We're both probably, well, one of us can be right. We're both probably wrong. But yeah. Did you watch her play against Williams? Yeah. I mean, this is an upcoming star, a much needed upcoming star for women's tennis from America. Kid is good. So it's going to bring up a third down as now the Falcons go from north to south. Going to go back in. They're going to wait. There, everything is set. They're going to ask them to rehuddle as we enter the fourth quarter where it's the Hornets 42, the Falcons 6. One of the officials was down on the north end of the field getting a drink of water, and they were getting ready to go, and he goes, wait a minute, wait a minute. I just got off the bus. What time's the game start? He's a little late. Somebody needs to tell him. We started a long time ago, sir. Cerritos, looking to get on the board. Quentin Davis at quarterback, looks over the defense. The Hornets come up, they back back out. Now the quarterback sits there. Here they come on a blitz, all out jailbreak. Throw it out in the flat. Just try to get away with it. And Corey, that's what you do in an all-out jailbreak. You drop it off to Ashford coming out of that backfield to beat the linebackers on that blitz. Yeah, and it was man-to-man -man coverage all the way around in the Hornets on that swing pattern, Roy Otto. Again, they were talking about aggressiveness and shyness early before the game, Mark. Roy Otto was aggressive. He makes the tackle, but good job by Rashad. Excuse me, Ashford. So it's going to bring up a fourth down. Cerritos is going to try and put some points on the board as Humberto Avila comes up. And the kick is up, and the kick is good. So he puts it through. At the 17, you add 10, a nice 27-yard field goal for the Falcons to get some more points on the board. It's now the Hornets, 42. The Falcons, 9. You're watching Hornet football on Sportsnet, USA.net. First field goal of the game. First field of the season, I should say, for Avila. And right now we're going to check some scores around the Southern California area. Good music. Go ahead, Richie. Hey, guys. So uh, despite the squabbling going on on the field, the Fullerton sideline is actually very calm, and they're having a good time laughing and having conversation with themselves. So they're not too worried about the squabbles going on in the field. Uh, also, speaking of the zombie donuts, I think me and Ryan are probably going to grab one on our way back up to the booth. Back up to you guys. <laughs> Thanks, Richie. What, they think they're done for the day? <laughs> guys, we're in the fourth quarter. You need to stay down there for a while. So we'll see if Justin Mannyweather can get that Return, little bouncer down the middle of the field. Taken right there. Manny Weather turns the corner, stays on his feet, trying to get to the outside, doesn't. And we get people throwing punches at each other on the field now, Corey, which really you don't want to see at Stevenson or Burrell, the free safety down there. Getting a little, getting a little yapping from the sidelines up here in stands too and seeing things like that. Unnecessary. Marcus Grossman comes back out. So we'll see if it's still again at quarterback is going to be Photo. Johnny Photo out of Boulder, Colorado. At quarterback, shotgun formation. Photo goes back, looks, trying to find somebody open. He's going to unleash it. 
lays it out there. There's wrestling going down the field. No flag, they're going to call it good man-to-man -man defense. It was better than good man-to-man -man defense by Stanley Norman. Yeah, it was much better man-to-man -man defense by Stanley Norman because on the out, you see the recent, the replay, can dry. Wilson was bumping and Jocelyn as well. So Photo unleashes on that one. It's going to bring up a second down and 10. Johnny's back there, looks. Looks again. Here comes the pressure. Gets away from the pressure. Throws the ball away so he won't take a sack, and it can't get intercepted. Bringing up a third down and 10. So, so Mark, third and 10 right at the 35. In the fourth quarter with 9.51 to play, Santa Ana 17, Citrus 14. Santa Barbara all over West LA 49 to seven in the fourth. Grossmont losing their first game. They won, they're winning now against LA Harbor in the fourth with 11.08 to play, 34-27. Photo hands it off to Hewlett. Gerald Hewlett up the middle, sidesteps one. He's gonna get hit from behind and Hewlett has a nice run of 32 yards on the play. And there's gonna be another unsportsmanlike conduct call on the Falcons, Juan Rodriguez, or excuse me, John Collins. As Gerald Hewlett's helmet comes off, John Collins reaches up and grabs his head purposely. And so now, here's your replay with 1346 to play Hewlett, burst of speed. And you gotta like the way he plays. And again, he gets eludes one tackle, brought down by Alex Fulmer. And we see his helmet come off, and there's Collins right there. Now you need to come out the game, not come out. You need to be kicked out for a play like that. That's cheap. El Camino 30 to two over Moore Park. They had an outstanding sixth inning to put up 10 runs and then it was over. And then later on, a host of others at 7 p.m. on sportsnetusa.net. LA Valley hosting Desert and Golden West travels to Riverside. We're gonna have to turn these down, Mark. I know, so photo comes photo comes back in, brings the team up after the penalty. Goes over here to Robert Johnson. Robert Johnson heading for the end zone. Photo throws it behind him on that. Incomplete pass, gonna bring up a second down and 10. At the 20, we're at the 1330 point here in the fourth quarter. It's the Hornets, 42, the Falcons, nine. And he talked about running up the score last week in tough times or contentious times like this if i'm a coach i'm not worried about not scoring right here so a photo looks over the defense this time keeps it himself drops a shoulder goes up the middle takes a hit at the 10 down to the eight so a nice run by johnny photo he can run also one of the quarterbacks that can throw and run we've got one through three let me put it this way there are three probably four players on the Fullerton College quarterback depth chart that would start anywhere else. First and goal for the Hornets. Photo quickly brings him up the line of scrimmage. Now he looks over, gets a change. Now he goes back in shotgun formation. Fitchula in motion for right to left. Look, stand, stand, stand. Throws to the running back. Oh, there throws it high. And boy, when you do something like that, and that's actually Jeffrey that's out there, not Hewlett. They took him out when he had the helmet yanked off. You throw it out like that, you setting your quarter, you're setting your running back up to get hurt. Yeah, and now Hewlett comes back in for Jeffrey. Yeah, so Hewlett and now back in the game. Second and as, down and goal. As this game goes on, I'll get to that in a second, Mark. Photo looks over, Hewlett in backfield. He hands it, fakes it to Hewlett. He rolls out, stutter steps, spins. Gets taken down. There's a flag right where there's normally holding against the offense on lunch scrimmage. That's exactly what it's going to be with 12.50 to go here in the fourth quarter. We're going to get into a little bit of a discussion we had over the summer. And there was a takedown by Samuel Davis, so they backed him up 10 yards. 
about a conversation about early season games between community college players. Here's your replay there. And yeah, that was a definite takedown, easy penalty to call. About the preseason games, the key to the county, some may say not the same significance anymore. And with the competitive competitiveness of junior college football, Photo looks at, here comes the blitz. He goes away from the power. Photo's gonna take it down himself. Gets a block by Hewlett, turns the corner, gets knocked out of bounds. Nice block by Gerald Hewlett to spring his quarterback. Yeah, he was your lead blocker, and Justin Mannyweather, again, allowed him to get to the outside to step out of bounds. But well, we talk about the competitiveness of community college football. They quickly come to the line of scrimmage. Handed off to Hewlett, sidesteps, tries to get in the end zone. He's just short the line of scrimmage. So it'll be fourth and probably a yard. Will we get a flag on the far side? Yes. So it's at the 10-yard line. There's a flag. So it'll be interesting. So they got a flag on the back at the 10 so is it offside? No, it's not going to be offside. And if it was, if it was false, no, it's going to be against. I think it's going to be. Well, we'll see if it's against Cerritos because illegal substitution okay. against the Falcons. So, so that's what the flag is. So with somebody running in from the sidelines or running yeah. off from the sidelines, and so that's what the flag is. It'll be third and short instead of fourth and short. So they now they got two more opportunities. And we'll see what happens on the next two plays because we want to get into that community college competition in California and beyond. Yeah, because we, you know, we were talking to Mickey Flynn about it. I was last night at the mm -hmm. Anaheim game. Mickey's all for it. Thinks okay. that there should be your suggestion of a home and home against an Arizona team should happen. Mickey, Mickey thinks you've got a great idea, Corey. And Mickey was here with his lovely wife. I love Mickey's wife. Third and goal, photo in a shotgun formation. Hewlett in the backfield with him. We get motion. We're gonna flag on the play. So it's gonna be offside. Encroachment against the Falcons. This game is slowing down. Sorry, gonna pot us back up so, That's we, can okay. hear, it's so we can hear others. Yeah. You know, but it's good. And here they come with the jumbo offense. Erlington Jones, 6'4", 305. Tyler Walton, 6'3", 330. Jacob Jankowiak, 6'2", 275. And Gerald Hewlett. We'll see. That's a, lot, that's a lot of meat and a little bit of bread. They're calling it a sandwich. They run a reverse. Muhammad Jefferson on the reverse. And Vince, excuse me, Josh Caldwell says, man, you ain't fooling nobody. That's the shake of the head when your aunt says, please. Muhammad Jefferson on the end of round. Talk about a big end of round. Did they call that like a Big Mac? Supersize it? Is that what that play's called? That was just ugly. Wow. 11, 24 to go. And the Hornets are going to try and settle and for here, a field and, goal. And here's my thing. If you're going to call that play, why not go for it? Yeah, yeah. Keep the same group out there. Ball is spotted, kick is up, and the kick is good. So with 11.07 to go here in the game, it's now the Hornets 45, the Falcons 9. You're watching Hornet football on Sportsnet, USA.net. Let's go back. Corey Nalen and I had a conversation. Corey Nalen, really, you really believe that the Hornets should take on a ranked out-of-state team yeah. to start setting up a true national championship again in community college football. Yeah, because you look at all the form, see, agreements. Uh, you look at all the forms that are going around in blogs in community college, and you hear the people talking about this team is the best, this team is the best. Well, there was one national championship. They call it Fullerton Mythical. Yeah, whatever. They're the national championship. People say a Mississippi team only lost one game should be. Arizona team was undefeated. They should be. I truly believe that California has a deepest and best talent best competition so if you lose one game and you played that competition like Fullerton did you're the national championship but why not 
California, Arizona, close proximity. That's what, a six-hour drive? Yep. Plus, we'd get to see the Jernigans more. That'd be good. Home and home. But a six-hour drive between the team from Arizona, and I, for, I forgot the name, and a team in Fullerton, you play one game here, one team there, or one game there and one game here, home and home, to get that conversation going, to get that competition going, to get across state lines, and then you can really discuss having a true national champion. Ball kick taken back up the middle, down at the 27. And even if you don't care about the true national oh, champion, Ashford. you have good quality games because that's what you want to see. You want to see a little bit more travel because community college, back in the day, 60s with Hal Sherbeck and other teams, you had 15, here's the replay straight up the middle, you had other teams, 15,000, 20,000, 30,000, Bakersfield, 50,000 people at games as Ashford goes straight up the middle and brought down one more time. This would cultivate community college football to another level because there is money coming into the community college level. You might as well put these teams playing against each other because he's not just local product anymore. So Davis hands it off, turn the corner, Tracking down outside, turn the corner, stay at the 40, taken out of bounds at the 40-yard line. I love your idea because we think community college football is a great product. Oh, it is. And if you get more people from around the country to be introduced to it, it might continue to grow like it did in the old days. Yeah, just take a look at the Fullerton roster. You have players from uh, Maryland, Virginia, Michigan, Louisiana, Georgia, um, last year Hawaii. You have these teams and a whole bunch of kids from California, want a couple from Arizona. You have these players. Why not play and go back to, let's say, their high school and play? So if you're listening out there, C-C-C-A-A, as Davis takes it around the right side, listen to Corey Nealon because I think Corey Nealon's got a heck of an idea to promote a great product or the SFCA. If you're listening, you should listen to Corey Nealon to promote this very good product of community college football. And Corey, yeah. Mark, when you look at it, you already have Garden City who went to Western Arizona to play Western Arizona in Arizona. If teams are already traveling, why not come out here to California or California go out to them? Yeah, because, Ryan, that's the NCJAA. Those teams, Garden City, Kansas, out of uh, and going to Arizona, they do travel. So get the CCCAA involved. It doesn't have to count against anything, but it's still going to be quality broadcast. Or excuse me, quality competition. Ball gets thrown up again. A little, a little tugging going down the sideline, and next thing you know, no flag again as Ryan Osborne chimes in on what he thinks should happen. And I think it's good for the entire programs too, Corey, yeah. men's and women's, if we start doing that. No, and I don't think there's pass interference on that. Both players were jo jostling around. Brian Terry gets it away with a little bit of one, so he comes out of the ball game for Jay Brown. And see, guys, I'm a little partial to that because I'd love to see him do that with softball on community college level. Ball comes out. Turnover goes on the field. This floor to come up. They do turnover for the Hornets. Yeah, I'd, li I'd like to see that in softball, but I think you do see that a little bit in softball because of the high school competition. Community college, yeah, you do have some tournaments. They come out of town, but again, you get two teams. Here's a fumble right here by Hall. Never really got the handle, handoff. He tried to take it instead of it being put in his midsection, so that's what causes a lot of fumbles out there. And it looks like it was recovered by, well, we just can't see, but it was recovered by a Hornet. Good job by the Hornets on that possession. Photo's still in a quarterback, but with softball, Corey, I mean, it'd be interesting to see Coach Pickler play maybe some of the better softball teams if he could continue to win out here in California. Photo goes back, steps up, feels the pressure, rolls out, it's gonna take it himself, flips it out there like in a basketball play at the 50. That's a dangerous pass by Photo. You gotta eat that one, get out of bounds and play another day. Don't lay out your wide receiver like that. And, my, and I think it would start with football. I think if you start it, because it's so high profile. And here's your replay. That's photo. There's nothing going. Run out of bounds. And don't get anybody hurt. So second down and three. Photo's going to hand it up the middle. Sidestep. Gets hit the line of scrimmage. Play on that. Continue, Corey. But you were talking about. 
Yeah, with with the football, that's really what start. Yeah, that's going to start it because it's so high profile. So you get two teams, one from Ari that Arizona team, you get the Fullerton College team, and you're going to have a crowd. You have that first one in Arizona because you don't have the first one at Fullerton. You have the first one at Arizona because it's going to be huge, and you're going to be that buildup, and whoever wins, you're going to have that rematch coming out here to Southern California to build that crowd, and it's really a good investment if they can work this out. Third down and three. Slide through, gets a little slivery, gets through the hole first down for the Hornets. Now that's slivery. That's slivery? Yeah, that's slivery because he slivered and he sliced himself in and he sliced and diced, split himself not in two, but got a little bit skinnier to pick up Baines. Get a flag on the play for dead ball activity. So it looks like they're gonna move it back. See, and I love your idea too, because would this not have been an ideal season yeah. For Southern California, national champions going to Arizona. It's a it's an ideal season because you have an undefeated Arizona team who wasn't the national champion against the national champion who lost one game. Yeah, and open up the season with that game, and then the bragging rights begin. Yeah, because we've all taken long bus rides. Okay. Well, that's okay. We could get a police escort. Yeah, we... we Corey Naylor would just pull his political strings and get that police escort yeah. in Arizona. Yeah. And I think it would draw. I, I really do think it would draw. I do, too. And you, and can't, have it, it and you can't have it in the daytime, though. No. Not near so. No, no. But I think, it, I think I'm with you, too, Corey. I think people would stand up and say, especially if it was a good game, people would finally say, boy, I didn't even know community college sports like this existed. Promote your product, and it would be on sportsnetusa.net. Absolutely. <coughs> Photo <coughs> takes it to Hewlett out here. Hewlett sidesteps one, cuts inside again, holds on the ball, goes down after he crosses the 45. We're at the eight minute mark. Here in the fourth quarter, it's the Hornets 45, the Falcons nine. And not everybody who listens to Fullerton College football is from out of state. We have some local product, a family out of Lake Forest wants to know what's the most points Fullerton scored in a game in their history. That was 79 points last year versus Grossmont. They scored 77 last week against Santa Ana. Thank you, Mr. Thacker, for that one. Hello, family. Tracy, we hope you're feeling better. Get back soon. Hornets, just at the marker, they're gonna give it the first down, first down right there. And that is Wilson out of Hornets. Dauphin, so Alabama. Hornets mixing it up as Kendrick Wilson catches that one. Seventy-nine points, seventy-nine to eighteen last year, seventy-seven twenty-eight this year. Remember, College of the Canyons, and we come back home to take on Mount Sac. Then we go back on the road to Moore Park. Yeah, and that game against Mount Sac will only be on Sportsnet USA. That's right. Net. I had that verified earlier. Ended up the middle, taken right there. Jeffrey gets a gain of about three on the play. So, so Jeffrey with a gain of three for the Hornets. Mark, we're gonna be rambling and roaming oh, and I traveling this season. Joshua Jeffrey out of Maryland at running back. So photo in at quarterback, Jeffrey in at running back. Second down and seven. Out wide to the right is green. Photo looks over the defense, backs off. Here they come on the outside. Photo tries to run away from the pressure and gets sacked on the play at the 45. To Sean Barnaby out of Nevada, freshman. He just is patient. I mean, it's not one of those coverage sacks. It's just one of those sacks that Photo's got to do something with the ball. So loss on the play. It's going to bring up a third down at about 19 for the Hornets right at the 46-yard line. Chase Stewart now comes in at running back for the Hornets. Watch so for Stewart in at running back. Watch for Devontae Richardson and Devin Fleming, Mark, on their side. Third down, 19. Photo looks it over. Stewart at running back. They fake it to Stewart. We get a flag or is a timeout? Delay of Delayed. game against the Hornets. So it's going to move them back five more yards. So the Hornets are going to start the season 2-0. 
and then they're gonna take a road trip, go up north to College of the Canyons, see what happens there. Then they come back home, they play Mount Sac, and then they play Moore Park on the road. Those will be the next games. The only game that'll be video will be the Mount Sac game here on sportsnetusa.net. Hand it to Stewart. Stewart goes up the middle, gets across that tackle to the 45. It's gonna bring up a fourth down. DeAndre, you speak of former Hornets, Mark. DeAndre McNeil, 65-yard touchdown catch today at Florida Atlantic. I don't think they won. I think that game was against Wisconsin, but again. Good receiver. Yes, he was Young here. man could move, and he had great hands as a receiver. Easy little kick. High, beautiful punt. Signaled for a fair catch right at the 20. Sit down, take a nap. First down for the Falcons with four. 50 to go here in the fourth quarter. It's the Hornets, 45. Cerritos, 9. You're watching Bullet to College Football on Sportsnet, USA.net. In the, into the ball game on defense, Omar Gonzalez out of Whittier, California High School, as well as Jalen Deans, 5'10", 250 out of Ganesha. So two Ganesha products. Shane Darso there, number 92. He's from Villa Park. We saw him last year play, Mark. We were impressed the way he played for the Villa Park team. So a new quarterback for Cerritos. Connor Crook is now in the game for Cerritos at quarterback. So Crook in at quarterback. Brown, the running back next to him. So Connor Crook hands it off to Brown. Brown goes off left tackle. Gets a gain of three on the play. Drag Darso three yards. Excuse me, make that Gonzalez three yards. And the linebackers going to be rooting Navarro out of Fullerton. Near side, it's going to be Ryan Simpson. And that far side backer, number 36, Jackson Loss, as you see the replay there. In the secondary near side corner is Brian Terry. Far side, wearing number 27, is Dewan Dorsey. We'll get the safeties in just one moment after this play. Candidate comes out. Wide to left, checks with the sideline, says, am I okay? Connor Crook goes up underneath center. Quick two-step drop, throws it out in the flat, taken down, skips one, first down for the Falcons. Missed tackle by Dorsey. Now coming in to the ball game for the Hornets. Safety is Jacob Jones, and you see them slip there. Making the tackle is Andre Kirkpatrick. I wonder if he's related to Marcus Kirkpatrick. You gotta ask that. He's from that area. So Murillo goes out wide to the right. Candidate comes out wide to the left. Connor Crook, shotgun formation at quarterback. First down and 10, right at the 32 for the Falcon. Crook gets taken for another sack and the defense for the Hornets playing aggressive football. And that's what Darso did last year at Villa Park all season long. New linebackers, uh, wholesale substitutions now for Fullerton is Tariq Spinks, and here's Darso, didn't fall for the play action pass and sacks the quarterback. So Tariq Spinks out of Killeen, Texas, Shoemaker High School, two players out of Killeen this season. The other is Xavier Green, different high schools. Second down and 16, right at the 26. David Hendrick warming up for the Hornets on the sideline if they get another offensive set. Connor Crook gets away from one, flips it up the middle of the field, incomplete pass. And again, now we're going to get a flag at the very end. That should be roughing the passer against the Hornets. Yeah, and it's going to be Kareem McDonald roughing the passer. And Mark, Corey, another that's interior just not player thinking. Is I mean, the ball's away. The quarterback's standing there wide even. You're not thinking. Okay. Here's Keep. the play. Well, look at it. One, two, hit. That's just dumb. That ain't smart. Maybe Ryan should find some recruits for the 145 broadcasting class. Tavarius Jones in there, number 94 for the Hornets. And I, and I like when we get everybody into the ball game, but let you learn the roster a little bit more. Yeah. Candidate comes out. Wide to the left, Connor Crook under center. 
going to run a little delay there, runs a little delay. Once again, a nice running back, Vincent Brown. I like Vincent Brown for the Cerritos team as the running back. And the delay was delayed by Rudy Navarro. Second down. We're at the two-minute mark for the Hornets here in the fourth quarter. It's been the Hornets again. They scored 77 last week, 45 this week. It's 122 points they have put up on the board so far. And there's a play outside to Zenovian Kennedy. So they're going to keep winding that clock. Something that Corey Nealon appreciates. Winding the clock, keep that clock going. Coach Campbell over there. And again, we want to say, Coach Campbell said, hey, don't forget about my dad. Give him our best wishes. And Coach, we did that just for you. We hope, Coach, you come back to practice real fast. And we want to thank your lovely wife for taking such good care of you. Connor Crook just says, wait a minute. Do I not have any blockers on the offensive line if I'm playing by myself? As he yes. gets sacked on the play. Yes. You know what that looked like? Richie and Ryan getting out of the car because they knew zombie donuts were here. No, no, that looked like Rich, Richie and Ryan headed for the zombie donuts. Oh, look at, look at, Ryan's down there saying, you know, guys, I got yeah. a microphone. The truth hurts. We were like that once. Actually, guys, the truth fattens. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Ryan, we had you potted down. Fourth down. High spiral, signal for a fair catch, right in the middle of the field, taken at the 30. It'll be first down and 10 for the Hornets with 43 seconds to go here in the fourth quarter. So the Hornets are going to start off the season with two consecutive home victories here on Sports at USA.net. Ryan, Os Ryan Osborne. Ryan, well, we, can we, you grab gonna, somebody? No, we were going to say, Ryan and Richie, come on up unless you grab somebody right now for an interview. See how quick he moved down there? He looked like a running back. He said, look at him. No. <laughs> I hide behind the tent. He looked like somebody had a pink box. So we got Mark Pavlovich, Corey Nalen, and the pink box crew down on the field. Oh, I like that. That donut was good, though. Yeah, it is. Hendrick now in the game for the Hornets. Ryan Osborne, he's got one person down there. You got something to say in what second? I get the wide receivers coach, James Griffin, in just a couple seconds. There's somebody who doesn't like to talk. Ooh, I know you had to pull his arm. <laughs> hey, he's been a – ask him about his – one question also about his recruiting out of Texas because that's one spot that Fullerton hasn't really had before. And the Texas hookup has really paid dividends for the Hornets. So we're going to have Ryan in just a second as this game comes to a close. It's the Hornets, 45, the Falcons, 9. You've been watching Fullerton College Football and Sportsnet, USA.net. Ryan Osborne down on the sideline. Ryan, a little quick answer on what this game was all about. We are being joined by wide receivers coach James Griffin. Coach Griffin, you guys performed admirably. How'd you, what'd you think of your group? Uh, we had a great job. We was missing Huffman out there today, but we did a great job. You know, we caught the ball, we blocked, you know, had some couple plays that we, you know, we would love to take back, but overall we had a great day in the office. Now this is a question straight from the booth. Your recruiting out of Texas has worked for you so well in the past couple years. What has that been like for you? Uh, it's been excellent, man, you know, Longhorn State, man. Got a bunch of great players down there, you know. You know, Fullerton Hornets love to, you know, go to Texas and bring those guys out here so they can enjoy this beautiful scene we got here. So, you know, Texas has been great for us. All right, Ryan, thank Coach Griffin for us. Well, thank you, Coach Griffin. We're going to send it back up to Corey and Mark in the booth. Thanks, guys. 
All right, so that's it, Mark. I mean, we got to have a couple highlights coming up for us, and then we're going to wrap this up after another victory for Fullerton. So, Mark, you have Ladarius Skelton here. This is one of those moves that he, the run with the fake there, and there's a fumble. And that was in the third quarter to start off the third quarter on that drive. They were driving. looked like they were going to score and score another touchdown. They couldn't get it. And here's another one. This one is the pass interference that was no call, but it really wasn't pass interference. It was just a good defensive play by Cerritos. And again, here's the sack at the end of the play by Shane Darso, who really put the clamps and really the seal on the victory for the Hornets. Well, that brings us to the end of this game. As your Hornets start the season 2-0 by beating the Falcons 45-9. We want to thank everybody from Fuller College TV for once again making this a wonderful game. Guys, ladies, thank you for what you do. For Richie Malgoza down on the field, for Ryan Osborne, the host of the Coaches Show with Richie, for my partner, Corey Nalen, once again. Don't forget, next week, the game will be audio on SportsNetUSA.net as we head up to College of the Canyon. But that happened all because the Hornets win today 45-9. For Tom Duff, our special guest out here, and for everybody that made this game possible, your Hornets come away with a victory 45-9 here on SportsNetUSA.net.